stop me, you're gonna have to fucking kill me! Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to a very special Saturday night off the rails. I am your host, John, and joining me is my my beautiful, very sultry co-host, Chris, from the Morning Mayhem, and Howdy. our extra, extra special, almost kind of like uh, you know, the Never Meet Your Heroes. But I've met my hero now, Christina Urso, also known as Radix Verum, which, um, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, that's Latin, correct? Yes, it for is. True, for true root. The root of truth. <laughs> trying trying to get to to the 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 basis of 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 the fact. That that was the the idea behind it. This was like my an old username I picked years ago when I first decided to go online and it just like stuck. So I've used it ever since. N naming things is hard. It is. I ask my children. <laughs> My, my 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 third born his name is rory r oh. I, I have to think about it i have to think about r u a i r i <laughs> ah how's that for messed up oh my goodness that's kind of canadians. cool though it's different yeah canadians exactly it's like it's like welsh or I, irish or, or or something i don't know but my wife is like let's 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 name it. I mean, he's autistic, so let's make it really hard for him. I'm like, great, <laughs> fantastic, good job. Yeah, give him oh, obstacles um, right out of the there gate. You go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it it runs my life. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, in the chat tonight we're uh, we're 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 a hundred percent going to talk about uh, Christina's fantastic uh, fantastic documentary that uh, she's currently working on. I'm actually super pumped. Um, yeah. I don't know how many times I've watched the trailer. At, at least uh, mm -hmm. a, a handful of times now. Really? Oh, really. that's good. <laughs> cool. I'm, I'm in in fairness. Um, some some of those times that that I watched them, I was like, I bet there's going to be one single still in here that I can steal for for purposes of of putting the thumbnail together and and and, and such. Nah. Um, there wasn't. <laughs> but anyways, I did watch it multiple times um um also you have uh you, you have a, a bit of an issue or ha at least had an issue with uh debanking oh, um us canadians know a little bit about debanking that's that's not just like a, a dirty word here or dirty concept that's a that's a thing that uh, trudeau actually hangs over our head like damocles sword yeah. and uh, although a lot of people like think that could never happen to me um also maybe uh because again, Chris is um, Chris is a uh, an award winning movie maker. Um, we're probably at some point gonna gonna have to talk shop just because I'm I'm actually look at all of these feathery things. Look at them. <laughs> look at them. This these ones. Some of these awesome. gold. This one's red. So I, I, that's extra good, right? That's the color they gave it to me. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll go with that. Yeah. It's yeah. Extra, extra special. Why not? Why not? Exactly. Like red better than gold or something. So I mean, so I, I imagine there's gonna be probably some shop talk in there. Um, which it, you know, it kind of excites me. Like a lot of people are like, oh, these YouTubers are talking about talking about shop or talking about editing or behind the scenes stuff. And and I imagine that's really boring for a lot of people, but it's probably be, boring be, because because i actually i do that i'm like oh my god tim pool i hate you but tell me about all of all of your behind the scenes stuff i'm so interested <laughs> and, yeah, and that, I, I, yeah. I dig that technical stuff too i'm like mm. like it's, i don't know maybe maybe i don't though i'll just tell you that <laughs> <laughs> and then um, but, but that's also why you pay the right people you know to help you you okay. gotta have people who you know your strengths and your weaknesses, mm -hmm. and then you have to find the people who have strengths where you have your weaknesses, and that's how you put together the perfect team. What if you just have weaknesses? <laughs> Everybody has strengths. God um, made us all unique. 
That's right. That's okay. true. Did you know your heart has a unique wavelength? Every single heart has a unique wavelength. Yes, mine is nearly flat. Everyone's is different. Like a fingerprint? Isn't that wild? You can't yeah. take him nowhere. You can't. He's no, you can't. Just, I am. Just... I am. I am incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> so, in chat, chat. Um, most of you have been following me quite a while. Uh, so just, just type in what you think my strength would be. And I think there's going to be crickets or jokes. <laughs> but yeah and then um i don't know i guess just sort of whatever whatever comes up comes up um i i basically named this show after my adhd off the rails because we'll start talking about a topic They're very intent on getting through it but then what's that a bird or a squirrel a sparkle something and then we're on to a, a different topic oh, i feel like that's all of us though now isn't it <laughs> yes you know what because happened? like our attention spans keep getting shorter and shorter so i think that happens to everybody and there's just so many distractions now there's so many different things that you have to keep track of you know it's easy to get distracted when now you have to have five different emails and you know 10 different social media accounts like that's a lot of work just to keep up with that you know, it's easy to get distracted i do that all day long i'll be in the middle of something and then Oh, I got to check this email and then I got to do this thing. And then before you know it, I never get back to what I was doing. <laughs> so Jay, um, he says my strengths are poop. That's one of them. Yeah. There you go. So because... you have one. <laughs> it's, 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 it's dealing with poop. Um, I have, I have, um, an infinite amount of stories of, of my children from everything from it's smeared on the walls to me regularly brushing it out of their teeth. Uh, so lo lots, lots of dealing with that. That's, that's a strength um, that the good Lord that gave me. That is a strength. Um, um, he, uh, he says bagged milk because I'm Canadian. I, I um, in the Eastern half of Canada, I have bagged milk. You bagged milk. I bagged. Oh my goodness, that's it's so weird. What a bizarre concept. It's like, the metric system. It has Don't nothing to do with the metric system. You are so wrong in that because it's the metric the system can be applied to a carton just like anything exactly. else. Exactly. You it's keep saying it. Weirdness. That's not true, buddy. <laughs> I've brought. I've brought. There's everyone, something deeply everyone, wrong about that. I mean, I, I, I get. I, I, you told the story a little bit. I get it. The, the metric system it's, played it's a the role. Metric system, and then it's not just and, because and, the metric system. And and we we were too lazy to in, in implement a recycling program for the jugs. <laughs> also, um, apparently, um, a strength that I have is like I, um, I don't say bagel correctly. What? <laughs> bagel? That's what I said. Right. No, it's not. <laughs> we said, Christina. We said the same. We're saying the same thing. And anyway, no. so so I fight with <laughs> I fight with my chat every once in a while about that. They're like, say bagel. And I say bagel, and they go, Oh, you said it funny. I'm like, it No, we like said it the same. Bagel. It tickles the ear wrong. It's it's it's, so it's like he's trying to say what, it's like you're trying to say bagel, but then you still have that aggle in there, so it's like a bagel. It's like it's like fighting to be right, and it's just wrong. <laughs> We're saying the same. Anyway, <laughs> plowing ahead. Um, <laughs> we're saying the same thing. Okay. Um, Christine, I'm I'm so I'm so happy that you could finally uh, make it. So Thank this you. this here is K and K uh, film on 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 Twitter. Um, your documentary. Criminally small number of followers, by the way. It got to pump it, those numbers it up. Is. It is. <laughs> um we we can we can do that um but i more maybe maybe more importantly maybe more importantly this knkfilm.com your your yes. sites for yes. uh what you're what you're doing um yeah we redid this whole website by the way well sort of i mean it's been revamped a little bit we changed the, the layout if you were familiar with the older layout oh my god was it an eyesore 
I put that together myself. So well, <laughs> I you feel have like done. this is much better. You have this done a, much better. A fantastic job. And it was actually this bit, this picture I stole for the thumbnail. Ha <laughs> ha. Um also that one of you with like oh, I gotta change that. Many That's such a dark faces. picture. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like that was a horribly Horrible picture to use there, like the nighttime picture where my face is completely in a shadow. I look like Batman or something. Like <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, just a shadow. <laughs> so tell us, um, tell us <coughs> about um oh god, I don't know. I'm a terrible interviewer. Everything. Um, from from uh basically what it is that happened and why you you feel such a story needs to be told because I mean, there's so many stories that need to be told. Like, uh, I mean, mm -hmm. like why or why you shouldn't eat quail, for example, that's a story that could be told. Why that's the fun. Fed napping hoax? Well, um, I don't, well, <laughs> it's just as providential, I guess. I happen to be at the time that this, that the whole thing went down, which was almost, by the way, guys, almost four years ago to the day they got arrested. So today's October 5th, 2024. The guys were arrested October 7th of 2020. So we're almost at the four-year anniversary of this entire hoax. So I think that's important to note that four years have gone by and we still don't have justice. But going back to what was happening during 2020, um, I had already been looking into, so I've been like reporting on FBI corruption prior to the Whitmer hoax. I was looking and researching actually the order of nine angles and it was that investigation and my coverage of that, that led me into covering more FBI corruption because once I started looking at that and like the, the FBI an infiltration aspect to it of like they the fbi basically created the american chapter of this satanic group that promotes um pedophilia among other disturbing things and then they they produce because they publish literature right um which the fbi was they were funding this publishing house to the tune of like two hundred thousand dollars to put out uh satanic neo-nazi pro-pedophilia propaganda that encouraged like mass killings and what they called cullings and things of this nature and so you know when you think about that right like that the fbi on the one hand says the greatest threat that we face is like white supremacist domestic terrorists <laughs> and then the fbi is creating this group that is publishing that material so it's like well you're creating the thing and then saying that this this thing is the threat so give us more money let us take away more of your rights and i wasn't having that and it's you know my my background of like when i woke up to everything was 9 11. and so i already had a background of studying like what the fbi was doing in their terrorism cases post 9 11 like things that they were doing to the muslim community and so i had that understanding of like the fbi manufactures fake plots or uh, like fake things and then they swoop in and they get to be the heroes and whatnot so i already had that understanding so then i start looking into patcon and um this is all during 2020 right and i was researching like ruby ridge waco oklahoma city all of that stuff and so you you know what of um <laughs> what a rabbit hole that is, right? And and the connections you start seeing between everything. And so then the Whitmer thing happens. And I immediately was like, oh, they're doing PatCon again. This is literally PatCon. So that was the reason I initially wanted to cover the, the case. And also the way that the arrest happened, like, hello, this was the October surprise of 2020. They arrested them a month before the election. They were using it to um smear tr like these people as trump supporters or something and then they were using it to denigrate trump and um i saw how the left was portraying these guys as like 
racist militia group, whatever. And then I saw how people on the right, how Trump supporters were trying to call them Antifa and say they're anarchists and like, oh, disavow or whatever, without really looking into any of like who these guys really were, or what their stories were. And so um, I also noted, noticed that the guys are immediately not like the most, um, what's the right word? Like they're not uh, pretty subjects, right? <laughs> they're, they're not the uh, most attractive people. They're so like typically- potato. Yeah, they're like working class people, right, though? And so they're not fancy. They're not somebody that is going to get attention that maybe other people would get, right, if, it, if yeah. the victim was different. So I thought these are these are men who are they're white Christian, like country guys, working class. They're, these are exactly the people who've been demonized and they have nobody who's going to help them. And I saw how. Joe Biden was saying that they were like ISIS. Gretchen Whitmer was saying the same thing. And I was like, okay, well, if, if you're going there, then we know there's a reason and I need to look into this more. And so as a as the case, they got arrested in October of 2020, as the case started progressing more, um, it became clear that the FBI's involvement in this was massive. Uh, before the discovery even came in. One gentleman took a plea deal, Ty Garbin. So that was an issue. He had a lawyer who was former FBI. There's questions about that individual. Was he an informant? We don't know. We still don't know all of the names of the informants. So that's crazy. I got four years after he's like, he's still. Yeah. Up. Yeah. Four years later, we still don't know all of them. Uh, we know about half of them, and some of them we're, we can be pretty sure we know who they are, but it's not 100%, right? Um, because a lot of information is still kept under protective seal, even now today, even though all these cases have been adjudicated. So what, what caught my interest in it was that, and if it was indeed like a PatCon 2.0, I felt that's something that is really important that needs to be covered. And then after the first trial, when that ended in zero convictions for the government in two acquittals, um, the mistrial on Adam and Barry, I knew that was a big deal. I reached out to Brandon, one of the guys who was acquitted, and I interviewed him, kind of like how you're interviewing me now. I just wanted to interview him to get his story like, hey, you just spent 18 months in prison. You just beat an entrapment case, which the government has like a 99% conviction rate on. So that's a pretty big deal. Like I wanted to get his story. And then I'm somebody who reported on the case since the arrest, right? Like I followed the trial. I reported on the discovery, all of the filings that were coming in. I listened in on the public access line every single day, all day. And I would even take notes sometimes, almost transcribing the proceedings, putting them up on my sub stack. So I'm somebody that was like super familiar with the case. And then interviewing Brandon and hearing his story, there was so much I didn't know as somebody who reported on it, wrote articles on it. And I was like, if there's so much I don't know, imagine what the regular average person who doesn't have the time to do all of this, imagine what they don't know. So I said to him, you know, we need to actually like make a documentary about this. And that's how the film, you know, came about. That's that. That that blows me away. Like <laughs> it I remember hearing about it. Um and at that at that time, um I wasn't I I wasn't the lunatic that I am now. <laughs> COVID, COVID turned me into a lunatic. Like ab absolutely. Um uh, up up until COVID, everything the government said happened the exact way they said it happened oh no <laughs> yeah and then wow and then and then COVID happened and i don't know what it was but i was like no it's wrong it's all wrong that was the, the thing that, this, that woke you up this, this everything's wrong it was like wow. i was snatched out of the matrix wow and well. then and then it was kind it's kind of like that that part in the matrix 
where 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 Neil goes, why do my eyes hurt? And then Morphe says, because you've never used them before. <laughs> and it was it was actually kind of staggering. And then so I'm like, okay. And then I I had to then go down every every sort of like rabbit hole and 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 thing. And I mean, I had I had some uh, people in my chat to be like, well, you should check out this thing. And then <laughs> um, one of uh, the the people in my community, uh, Jack, um, uh, he's uh, he, he's really big on 9-11. Mm. Well, 9-11 happened the way the government happened until Jack started pointing me in directions with my new eyes. And I'm like, holy shit, is, is the world even around at this point? What the <laughs> hell is happening? <laughs> I think everybody's had that moment, like, you know, when they're like researching the this stuff. I'm not exactly. even sure anymore. I'm not even sure. Or did and, Stanley Kubrick just make us think that we did? Exa exactly, right? So, so then, <laughs> then, then all of a sudden, it's it's like the 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 FBI caught some caught some guys trying to 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 get Gretchen. I'm like, did they? <laughs> did they? Did I, they I, though? I <laughs> <laughs> I love all the memes that popped up from that. It was like the dudes with like the khakis and the same sunglasses. And they're like, sup, bro. We're just like you guys. We're protesters and stuff. <laughs> you know, at all these different events, they all have like the exact same dress and look and everything. <laughs> it's like, come on, guys. Yeah. And, and like, like the whole thing, it, <laughs> it, it, it has turned me into um, probably like, like a radical. I am I am um a I am a, in Trudeau's words I am a member of uh, of of um wait what did he say I'm, I I'm a part of the fringe minority that uh of the the fringe minority with unacceptable views mm. Oh my goodness unacceptable that, that, Unacceptable that views That sounds a little bit bigoted yeah, I don't know. It, what does that mean? Unacceptable? Do we have well, to like get rid of these people? Huh? Well, is that what that, that's where we're going the there. The what, second what is... half of it was the, these are <laughs> um, um, a fringe minority with unacceptable views, and how do we tolerate these people? Mm. That's the oh quote. right. I was like, okay. I don't know. Put us in the oven because <laughs> isn't that what comes next? Yeah, right. And well, yeah. So yeah I mean. They dehumanized a lot of people, yeah, and that's so what I, they do every day. Yeah, so I, I I heard that the FBI was was solving these crimes, and I'm like, I that sounds fake as shit. That sounds fake. And then and then I, I was just like, okay, so if this one sounds fake, much like every other conspiracy I I have I have learned, um, what about all the other ones? Those those Muslim guys that they rounded up and saved us from, how how do I know that they weren't just rounded up off the street and and a bomb was put in their hand and then the FBI was like ha ha I I can't trust anything, I am I am now worried that that um you know all federal agencies like that um aren't aren't the the cause of the problems themselves again I'm not even sure that that FEMA itself isn't responsible for the goddamn hurricane. Exactly. <laughs> and not to be laughing about that because the devastation is horrific. I've never seen anything like this. Like, I didn't even know it was possible for that to happen. Like, I grew up in Florida. I've been through many hurricanes, like category four or five. You know, we had Andrew and all of that. And this, like, they don't, they're not able to maintain like the eye wall, like tight, like that in land they can when it they're like briefly passing over but it i've never seen this and then in the mountains like what it's, it's the just so thing. creepy I mean, and right before this don't forget what happened with mike lynch the uk's bill gates right At, right after he beats the doj uh in the American court system where he'd been embroiled in like litigation for 10 years, his boat, his yacht has this freak water spout that sinks the boat, but yeah. everybody else around it is fine. And it's on video. You see this and you're going, this is not whatever this is like, this is not a normal 
weather event. This is whatever. Hard. It's hard. Yeah, like this is something else. It's weird. It 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 it, it is. So I mean, I was trying I was trying to explain it to my wife, and I was like, well, I mean, rain and storm surge in in the mountains, kind of like Tennessee's not a exactly like on, on the ocean is it it's not on the ocean no <laughs> no so i was i was trying to i was like well i mean a hurricane can move a lot of like so i was like it's pushing like if you like were to push water in a bathtub you get all the water that kind of comes up but i i was like I, I don't i don't know how it got to where it did it's i don't know it's it's the it's the strangest thing how how literal towns no longer exist Mm -hmm. She was like, I, yeah. she's like, is this climate change? I'm like, well, no, because no. I mean, it, it happened. Um, was um, was it Chimney Rock or whatever was 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 hit um like a hundred years ago or or something like that, and so maybe it's just you know every one in a hundred years something crazy like this happens. But it's like, I don't I don't know whether or, or not they made it happen. That right, crazy, but I just don't know anymore. Yeah, yeah no, I don't think it's crazy at all. They've been talking about like weather manipulation since the 50s. You can go find archive like mm -hmm. newspaper articles where they're like bragging about this stuff and, and cloud seeding and all the other stuff that they do. Um, so any anybody who denies cloud seeding, I just want to hit them. They were just talking about it recently over there in the desert. What was it? Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, it was, it was in front they of everybody. It. it was, it was, uh, it was, you know, brought up in front of the world. Like, yes, we are doing this. And yeah. Then, like, oops, it's causing a little bit of too much rain, but you know, <laughs> whoopsies. <laughs> so they did a new story about like, look how smart we are. We can make it rain in the desert. And then all of a sudden it rains and it rains and it rains and it rains and it floods. And then we're like, oh, it's the cloud oh. speeding. Like that doesn't exist. That's a myth. I'm like, <laughs> you just, <laughs> you were just bragging about it. <laughs> uh, uh, or, um, yeah, and I will, and I will tell you about this storm. I mean, it, it, so I'm in central Georgia and the worst we ever had, I think it might've been Andrew that came through and it turned into a tropical storm by the time it got to us. And we had our big flood in 1994 mm -hmm. and, um, you know, we, we, we had to like get water trucks, come over and give us water. We were without power for a little bit, but nothing like super ridiculous. Cause by the time it got to us, it had weakened significantly. It just kind of stalled and pulled in all that rain. So, um, I now work for, um, an insurance company. I'm it for an insurance company. I'm on the support desk. So I handle calls for every County in the state of Georgia and our home office and all of our, uh, field folks that go out and everything. And I will tell you that the, the, the size of the destruction of this storm is even being downplayed in the news because I still have county offices that don't have internet. Some don't have power in Georgia. Wow. And um, some of my people, and I, I'll brag on them all day long. I don't want to dox my company or anything like that. But I mean, I got people that have no power, no internet, no running water at their house, but they're getting to work so they can handle the claims for their members. So they're going to work stanky, no air, no, you know, doing whatever they got to do. I'm sure they're finding ways to do it, but they're going out there to make sure these people will get their claims done, get their checks written and stuff like that. And it's just been very heartwarming for me to hear these people calling in because, you know, I'm trying to get them back up on the internet, make sure they can get running and everything. But to hear the stories, I mean, of just people like, like I said, we couldn't even get, you know, into the driveway or to the parking lot of the building. We had to go through another business and then their parking lot and cut over because it's all blocked and lines are down here and there. I mean, it's it's terrible. It is terrible. And we were supposed to be on the right side of the hurricane, but um, I don't know where exactly, but it did shift just a little bit, just enough to put us on the on the left side or the west side of it, which had the significantly less winds, significantly west, the left less side winds. The weak side. Right. And so I didn't have any problems. Wow. You know, I really wasn't even worried about it that much because, you know, normally it's not that big of a deal by the time it gets here. You know, heavy winds, right. rain a little bit, but nothing super, super major. Um, but yeah, hardly noticed anything. And then when I looked at the news, I was just blown away. Um, no pun intended there on, you know, on how bad yeah. it actually was for about almost about a quarter of the state. 
and then continuing all through, you know, no offense to Florida, they see it all the time. They know it, you know, it's kind of expected there, but to go through Georgia like it did and then the Carolinas and Tennessee, I, was, I my, blew my mind. I've never seen anything like that. And, I, and I've got know, people and family in all those areas and it's just, it's devastating to hear stories from it. Yeah, it's horrible. You know what's really interesting? What's that? FEMA being like, stop using your private helicopters. Yeah. Stop using your drones. Sir, you cannot use that chainsaw. And um, what are the, oh, yes. Also, here sending not... back supplies, turning yeah. away supplies. Do you, sir, who's handing out medicine? Uh, do you have a license for that? You can't do that. Um, also, um, booking all the hotels and uh, being like, yes, we have $750 for uh, uh, each family, not per person, each family that's affected based on equity. Because if you're white, oh, well, you fuck you. It. Um, also, <laughs> Also, it's a loan. <laughs> what? Yeah. Oh, oh my god, yeah, that's exactly. so it is. disgusting. Yes, so it's disgusting. A loan. So it's shameful. A... As they give billions away to Ukraine, to Israel, to Lebanon. Oh, so we'll arm Israel. They can bomb Lebanon, and then we'll go. Oh, we have to give Lebanon money. It's the same scam, just like with the you know. Oh, this is our biggest terror threat. Oh, we just happen to be the ones creating it. Oh, look at that. You know. That's, this is a sick game yeah, that oh. they're playing, but this is like end of empire behavior, right? The kinds of things you're seeing where the government is completely, it's occupied by foreign interests. Like they don't represent Americans. That couldn't be more clear. They're even rubbing it in people's faces. Samantha Powers is putting up Twitter videos where she's bragging about they're sending this infrastructure to Ukraine, like electrical infrastructure, the things that we need here that we don't have, that people that are victims of the hurricane don't have, oh, we're going to send it over to Ukraine. And then they post this stuff and they're laughing about it. They're like telling you and rubbing it in your face that like, we don't represent you. We represent an international banking and financial interest. This is not us. <laughs> it's not the American people they represent. Uh, so it's all been very shameful. And of course, Lindsey Graham gets up on Fox News on Sean Hannity when asked about the hurricane, uses the opportunity to say we need to do more for Israel. And so, you know, it's like th th this is these are our politicians. This is our government. It's not legitimate. It's an illegitimate hostile entity that hates us and is actively replacing us. You know, that's why the borders are wide open. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In. Oh, and they're also gleeful about the fact that this hurricane could, you know, cost Trump some could tr cost him the election because, oh, these people may not be able to, to get out and vote. And they're talking about it in the media as it's a good thing and bragging about it. So that's, that's the other strange part of this. It's like. They're celebrating it on the one hand, and then it's like, you know, do, do people see, how can people watch this stuff, see this stuff, and then still listen to the media when they do this stuff to your face? And they're actively like, I don't know, it's like Stockholm Syndrome, I guess. People that have been abused for so long start to like love the abuser you know, and make excuses and justify its behavior or think that they, they must deserve it or something. It's like this weird learned is it, helplessness. Is I don't it know. abuse if you don't know that you're being abused? Yeah. I was going to say it's what this guy was doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. It is abuse if you don't know you're being abused. Um, you better, you know, learn and educate yourself on it, which is also why I have tons of videos on my channel about things like narcissism, mm. which is now like a societal issue <laughs> huge yeah yeah it, it is uh i mean narcissism can actually be um i don't know created in in kids like sometimes you, you're born with it um mm -hmm. but you you can actually easily create it in 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 young people and where yeah. our society is just it's just that now it's like a trauma response. That's what it is. To early, it's a response to early childhood trauma, in my opinion. But 
I'm uh, if okay. But I also okay. I also feel like there's a demonic aspect to it as well. To be fair, but if if you're uh, let's say you're a young person, maybe you're a girl, maybe you're pretty, and uh, you know you maybe post something, and uh, I don't know, maybe it, it, it's fine. But then you post something later, and you just happen to be wearing a, a lower cut top or something. And then all of a sudden, the, the views and the likes go up. And all of a sudden, you're like, wow, that dopamine? That was so good. These <laughs> jugs, these jugs are the answer. And then all of a sudden, before you know it, you're, you know, you're chasing the, 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 the views and the, and the likes and, and everything yeah. that eventually then comes with that. And before you know it, you're, you're on OnlyFans. And, but Im and imagine too, and I think like for children, like their brains aren't fully developed. They can't be held responsible for this stuff. Like I remember I'm old enough that I didn't have this stuff as a kid. Thank God I didn't have Instagram. I didn't have a cell phone until I was 17. And my first phone was like the little Nokia yeah. where you had to press the button three times to get like one letter. So you could like text basically. It didn't get the internet at all. You could maybe pull up like a browser, but it would take forever to load. And like, you couldn't really do anything with it. That was my first phone at 17 so i thank the lord that i was not bombarded with this like nonsense as a child because i have no idea what i would have turned into had i had those like you're saying like sometimes you don't go out trying to do something but the it society incentivizes this behavior and rewards this behavior it does and and i mean even like i uh you know being a a very very small fish in a very very large content creator pond um even even i like look at at like all, all my numbers and 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 stuff like that and and i i i desperately try to not go like oh yeah you know th this this one is so good or this one is so bad because i don't i don't, I don't want to get uh, you know mm -hmm. hooked on it like that yeah um although i'm although i i am so so adhd that i'd probably forget but yeah, when I look at um, at some of my numbers that I'm doing now, I go, "Oh yeah, this this video sucks." But that may or may not be true because, like, I remember when I first started on YouTube, it took me forever to get my first thousand subscribers. I remember when I would get maybe three comments on a video, or like six people would watch a video, but some of those videos were fantastic. They're like little hidden gems, you know. Just because you may not get the viewers, you know, it may not translate into views doesn't mean it's not good. The algorithm favors certain things and you never want to get into the trap of like trying to please the algorithm. This is also why I I, I've stepped back from putting out a lot of content on my channel. I don't do a video unless it's something that like i myself am interested in and want to talk about but i mm -hmm. never like want to be rushing to oh like i want to cover something because it's happening like now and this is what people are talking about um because i've seen like creators do that and i've seen people and you just you can't keep up with that stuff it's just impossible it's not something that you can it's not sustainable and uh, I, it's funny because like some of my commentary on this stuff, like has stood the test of time. I put out a video telling people, you know, don't try to be like a, a YouTuber as a career because that's a very rare and it's a temporary thing. And you should try to like build up other avenues of, you know, where you can use your channel to actually launch another business or something where you're doing other things. So you're not reliant on like YouTube as a platform because I don't see it as a platform lasting another 10 years. I mean, it'll, it'll probably still be around, but it won't be what it is now, which is like the main uh, platform and go to. Now we've got places like Rumble that are probably going to eventually overtake and surpass YouTube as like the main. So. Oh, I think that easily going to happen because YouTube I censors so. and they shadow ban content and Rumble doesn't do that. And for that very reason, naturally more people are going to gravitate there because you can speak freely like i myself know when i'm recording a video for youtube i know i have to self-censor i have to literally mm -hmm. use acronyms for certain things 
you know? And so it's just, just to the mental energy it takes to do that. It's so much easier for me to just record a video where I, I say exactly what I think and just put it up on rumble and not have to worry about like, Oh, I'm going to get, lose my channel or get demonetized or whatever. Cause rumble doesn't do those things. So just for that very reason, I think that it's eventually going to overtake YouTube or, you know, who knows, there could be other platforms that, um, that come about. I mean, right now the i think all of these big tech platforms are falling apart elon has you know purchased twitter and, and he's kind of saved that but even twitter itself even now even under elon musk is not to me it's still touch any, and go it's not anywhere near like the fediverse i i'm on fetty more than i am on anything else you know which is i think going to be the future you know as far as that goes it's like social media but that's a whole other topic so uh, we're all anyway. doing the ADD stuff. No, it's good. That's what I like. Um, my so some Sorry. of my so I don't. I, I don't, go off I, on tangents. No, too. I like your tangents, Christina. That's what. That's why. That, um, ma that matches his energy. That's good. Okay, there we go. I'm just we're here for the ride. It's like it's like <laughs> it's like um it's like looking into like a, a funhouse mirror where it makes me look like a very pretty lady. Um. <laughs> There you go. So, so some some of my some of my videos are like, um, and I don't I don't censor myself. I don't I don't have the I don't have the um, the capability. I'm not. The I'm not. Energy I'm not to... good at it. I can do it a little bit. Like I can be like, oh, this person's self deleted because that one's just so yes, ubiquitous, exactly. right? But I'm not gonna go go into like okay. So um, for for example, uh, do 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 do. This one was a uh, Missouri math teacher, Haley Clifton Carmack, admits having sex with a student and leaving her mark. I cover a lot of those stories. Teachers raping students. Yeah, that's happening with increasing frequency. People like that shit. Originally, I was covering <laughs> things like this. This is this is why um, uh, fucking the, the, the Scooby Doo, the the the. What's her face? The Mindy Kaling oh, yeah, Velma yeah. was such a Velma. bad show, or or th that kind of stuff. And it, it was stuff. it was fine. And then and then I I stumbled onto like some I don't know true crime stuff. And then I was like, the numbers were up. I'm like, I guess I've accidentally got a bunch of you know ladies. You found your thing. And I just I sort of fell into this thing. So I'll like I'll like do I'll do a video where where it's just like uh, sometimes I I do I do silly ones where it's like man's testicles bitten by python while on the toilet um leaving his bathroom sprayed in blood that's a short oh video kind of funny kind of scary terrifying really but like you know things things like that or a uh, um russian tourist who try tried to rape a cow is gored by the animal res uh rescued by thai police that's a funny story and so i i, I just but it, it's a uh, you know there's 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 actual news on there too um, like like Eric Adams and blah 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 blah, but yeah. I don't censor. I just because I'm already demonetized. You know, I oh, made okay. I made a video. It was such a boring video. Fuck. Thinking back of it, it makes me so mad. I worked so hard, being so perfect, and then I got monetized, and then I'm like, great, and then I made the most pedestrian video. It was like it was like 15 minutes of wallpaper paste. It was just so pedestrian about Jeffrey Epstein. Oh. And then YouTube was like, we've gone over your channel and uh, we've determined that you're ineligible to be uh, monetized. And so I've tried like five times now and they're like, no, nope, you can't. You must have you must have stumbled across something in there that it was, they it didn't the, like. It was the second it was the second time. Um it wasn't when I even it like, I've done Epstein like, stuff on my channel and haven't gotten although it was about like the the, the lists were maybe, coming out and then and then it, everyone's like oh god the list is finally coming out and then it was just like a nothing burger it was I'm like you demonetized me for this so weird but they yeah. do weird stuff like that sometimes sometimes mm -hmm. it's the strangest thing that like gets you um struck like I had I did a video I don't remember what this was like totally but it was it was somehow like i was making a funny like commentary video but i used elliot rogers and like the 
thumbnail and in the title because it was like I was making a joke and um just just mentioning Elliot Rogers like they took the whole video delete they deleted the whole video like immediately and I was like nice. it was nothing like I didn't I didn't promote what he did or anything like that I, it was just a joke and like just saying his name in the title and having the thumbnail and I was like but there are true crime videos that actually show some of his uh, videos and his voice talking. I didn't even do that. And they deleted the whole thing. It's so weird to me how YouTube works. And it's so freaking arbitrary. Like this is the problem where you can look at somebody else can use uh, his, you know, a, a picture, a video of him, say his name and their channel stays up and they're fine or their video stays up and then you do one and it's like deleted immediately and you're like well what why though and they'll never tell you they're not going to ever give you a time you know oh it was this time stamp and you said this thing because then you could take that out and then maybe put the video back up they don't let you do that and they don't tell you what it is they never will and uh, this is why I think that, you know, they're done. And there's many other reasons, too. I mean, there's the antitrust stuff, the, the investigations. Oh, my husband's calling. Sorry. No, I'll have good. to call him back because he's traveling and I just want to know he, he's okay. Um, but, yeah, it's just like YouTube is horrible and yeah. they're awful. They had... They're, they've had a monopoly for a very long time, and um, hopefully that changes soon. Although I don't really trust the government to, like, uh, you know, rein them in. But they did. They have talked about breaking off at least the ad uh, business from Google, the AdSense thing. So separating it out maybe a little bit, although I still don't think they're going to do that. They pulled down all the streams covering uh, the Trump rally tonight. Oh, did they? Yeah. So I am a moderator for Jeremy Hambly ordering. <laughs> and, oh, okay. And uh, so uh, modding his chat, people were like, oh, Sticks X and Hammer. Uh, no, no. They were saying, um, oh, um, Cobra Cast just got taken down. They just um, knew Cobra Cast. It's Jeremy. Jeremy of the Cubs and Gamers. Of Cobra. Yeah. Oh, oh wow. Geek and Gamers. He's in yeah. a pretty big channel, right? He's yeah, massive. Yeah. That's and then, yeah. For what, and, then, and then we're like, really? They... We're like, that's crazy. Uh, a violation of policies. We're like, what? okay, that well, that's weird. That that's fine. We're we're still up. We're still doing it. It's fine. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, the the chat, the, the chat's going, oh, Sticks X and Hammer just got, uh, um, his stream just got pulled down because he was also streaming the thing and it's violation of policies. And we're like, wow. that's the weirdest thing. Like, well, why? What are they doing? And then so we're, we're carrying on. Uh, and a few minutes later, all of a sudden, the the screen it just it just like blinks out, and all of a sudden, it's got like a like a do not enter sign on it, and it's like uh, uh it's like violation of policies, and they just they yeeted it. So that's like three massive streams that they just yeeted. That's insane. And I was like, this is the most insane censorship. I, I it's, couldn't. It'll get couldn't worse. It. It's gonna get worse, and I'll tell you also, like I don't trust Elon Musk. I don't. I think he's uh, he's done some good things. You know, I think it's great that he saved Twitter and whatnot. Um, but I simply don't trust him as somebody who genuinely cares about free speech. Mm -hmm. And some of the things he's done since he acquired Twitter, I find questionable. He also didn't hold his promise of restoring all of the accounts that were terminated. You know, I know people who have tried and try still trying to get their original accounts restored and nothing happens so mm -hmm. i don't like that and i don't trust like i don't like the way he's monetized twitter and made it so now people can have like a uh, they get ad revenue for posts they're making on twitter and people can subscribe to their twitter and then i'm like okay so now the entire thing is like it's in, it's monetarily incentivized now so people are incentivized to put out outlandish things uh -oh. um in order to get like ad revenue and somebody who is perfect example of this is this lady pearl 
Do you guys know who Pearl is? I know Pearl. Okay. I told my wife about Pearl the other day. Oh, they God. mocked her on this, like, like she was repping this suit company or whatever, and she was wearing, like, this pantsuit, and she's, like, <laughs> like, like a rectangle. And I was like, they picked the wrong one. I showed oh, my wife. No. She goes, she's not ugly. I said, I didn't say she was ugly. No, she's, she's just, not. She's, but... she's just, it, there's no, she, Kurt, nothing, nothing. I know. Nothing. I, Poor girl. I, I know Pearl. <laughs> I, I know Pearl. <laughs> yeah well she's like she's classic for she just says stuff to get reactions yeah. out of people and some of the stuff she says i know she's doing it because she knows that like if i say this thing this mm -hmm. is going to make a bunch of people lose their crap and they're going to engage with my posts and That's so right. she's using it as a marketing strategy to grow her account and to for more people to see her and interact with her but also like she's getting ad revenue on, on negative comments and positive ones so right. isn't that interesting <laughs> yeah or, or the or the post i think there's i think there's this one broad um i, th I, th I think her i think it, uh, she goes by like freckled liberty or something oh, and then so <laughs> yeah freckled libertarian or i don't know something, something whatever like that. yeah but but then so she'll she'll post um it'll be like it'll be like somebody else's meme and then and then it will be like this um this true guys and then everyone's supposed to then go in and be like, oh yes this is totally true i totally agree. and i'm like this is the lowest fucking like tier level tweet ever and it's just filling up everything and yeah it's yeah so it's i so, mean and it's frustrating too like you know trying to grow like my documentary twitter account it just gets buried and i know that so i know twitter so they deleted the this is something that i maybe people forgot they deleted my documentary twitter account and yes, i did. had to they did for two days i had to uh get i had to how many people i had to get like a bunch of people to tag twitter support because I, f they never even gave a reason of like why it was terminated. We never violated any of the rules. Plus it has a, it's like a paid verified account. So I'm paying for this, uh, to use this service. And then you terminate my account when I haven't violated any rules. You know, that documentary account, like I don't really use it except to put out stuff about the documentary. I'm not in like comments, calling people names or like doing something that would be where I could maybe get violated. Like there's literally nothing I've done except post factual information that is documented, you know, there. So it, it, it's like unassailable and then just stuff for the documentary. The account was terminated for no reason. For two days, I had to tag all these people, all these, uh, you know, bigger name conservative people trying to get them to, hey, say something about this. You guys say you care about freedom, but you all suck, you know, Elon Musk off all the time and you won't criticize Twitter when they make a mistake. Why don't you say something about this? Why don't you say, hey, you don't get to go out there and call yourself like the savior of free speech when you guys are terminating documentary accounts of independent media for no reason without violating anything when that person is paying for your service i am paying money i also had purchased ads for the first trailer like i actually purchased twitter ads to promote our first trailer last year so i had paid for ads i have a paid account i'm giving you a lot of money and this is how i get treated yeah. I called him Elon Harkonnen and I made a meme of him looking like a big fat Harkonnen, you know, like from Dune. And uh, he didn't like that. <laughs> he didn't like that. So <laughs> he, I will a, have you know, he's aware I, of me. And he doesn't I was like one me. of those people that, that, that like retweeted and I like quote tweeted and spoke up about it. And I can I can tell you, I probably made no impact, but I did it. <laughs> I did it. I don't know what made the impact. I think it was just me bothering elon so much and like then I, a bunch of other bigger name people to, to to their credit came to my aid mm -hmm. but you know imagine though if i didn't have that right if they deleted the twitter account and i didn't have my personal one where i could get other people to like help me right think about all the people who aren't that don't have the privilege i have of like having a network of people to help regular small creators if that was me five years ago i wouldn't have had people to 
to uh, these bigger name people to help me call attention to that. Like that account would have been gone. And I know yeah. that because I, you know, how many I'm on my third, at least personal account at this point. So I know I would have lost it and not had any help getting it back. And so that is a problem that I think that X still faces is the fact that somebody would even have to do that, that you have to call the make this massive online thing because a mistake is made or whatever it is like that's not justifiable to me so i i devote more of my time to the fediverse which is decentralized social media you know where there's a community of people there that i talk to you every day and they're like nice and normal for the most part it is fediverse so is that normal is that like, to a degree is that, like, is that like mastodon but mastodon, yeah. that's for like left-wing pedophiles isn't it no they're on mastodon but anybody can create uh, can spin up their own fediverse instance which is on mastodon so more and more you're seeing you know people on our like people like us spinning out their own instances and creating you know platforms and spaces where we won't be censored Mm -hmm. and because uh, you can create your own instance like you can make your own server you know it's just uses that um open source framework daniel clancy of uh digital cyanide i think what his channel is called now uh says <laughs> thank you rad x finally a non dick sucker of elon oh <laughs> There you go. Well, <laughs> listen, let me tell you something about Radix. I don't do that for any. The only person that I will like totally support is Jesus Christ. That's the only person who's beyond question with me because he's literally the truth. Um, and so, no, uh, I don't see these like they're not impressive to me. I'm not impressed by Elon Musk. I'd be more impressed with him if he did some, you know, if he actually held his word and whatnot uh mm -hmm. i am grateful to him though for what he has done that's not to be like i i have like a unfounded criticisms i don't think that that's true i actually think i'm quite fair as far as my critique of uh, elon musk goes and of course that's always open to change if he does something that you know if he starts maybe promoting Christ, <laughs> then maybe my opinions on in him would change and be more favorable. Um, but that's contingent on his behavior and what I see from him and, and dressing like Moloch for Halloween or whatever is not really my cup of tea. <laughs> oh, but today he was dark MAGA. So I don't know, maybe, maybe that's, that's yeah. something. <laughs> well, um, maybe he's coming around, you know, you never know though. You can't trust these people, especially people that are in positions of influence yeah. right because those are the powers and principalities or at least they're susceptible to those those uh demonic energies and if you don't have mm -hmm. the right spiritual armor you, you can't withstand that because these are non-human uh intelligences that don't sleep mm -hmm. um absolutely when when i was and this is kind of on topic but slightly off um when i was younger maybe maybe we're talking like 2008 or something 2009 I, I i was what you would what you would call um an anti-theist really yes i mean i was like religion is awful it ruins everything hmm. and um Some, you're, sometimes you're, that's you're bad for having one <laughs> and then like i was probably like a like a like a new convert problem right um and i was like super up on the on the um like the 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 atheism subreddit because i was so edgy oh man so edgy <laughs> and then <laughs> and then um from there um i like simmered and and because that can only last so long i'm not i'm not really an edgy boy uh <laughs> so um, from there, that just simmered into just atheism, right? It's just kind of, it was just kind of like, um, it was, it was just, it, it was the, the equivalent of not collecting stamps for a, for, for a hobby. It was just, it was just, it was nothing. And then from there, I, I don't know. I, I kind of like, kind of like some, somehow drifted maybe to, 
towards like maybe may, maybe there there is maybe maybe there's not i i don't know and and then again the pandemic because this pandemic fucking turned my entire like being upside down um all all of a sudden i i, I remember i was i was like I was washing dishes and I had, I had my, my, my phone up on the, um, above the sink on like a little tray thing. And then I'm like washing dinner, dishes. And I was watching something about the pandemic. And I don't know if maybe, I don't know if it was a concrete con like a, like a Tim pool or a, or if it was the Jeremy or it could have been the news. It could have been Dell big tree. I don't know. Somebody, um, I Jones even, although I, I had I needed to take a pause from him during the pandemic because I was, was getting really freaked out. Um, but all of a sudden, I, I I I don't know. I had like a it was kind of like a, like a weird kind of like feeling. I, I usually describe it as kind of like a like like a vibe, and it just it like it came in into my head that like um what we were what we were seeing is genuinely truly evil. Um, I had my wife was severely pregnant at at the time um, with with our with one of them, and uh, <laughs> there's just so many <laughs> with one of them <laughs> with one of them, and uh, like every, everyone was like, ha ha ha, we're gonna hold you down and and, and vaccinate you against your will, and you can't do nothing about oh it. Oh my it, god! Right? It was like super. It was like we were seeing. Uh, like like grocery stores were were beginning to be like you you can't buy groceries without vaccine passports. Like it, it was getting really really bad, and it it was it was it was pure evil. Like like I've I've never seen evil until then, and it clicked in my head. I'm like, if if this is real evil, if these people are genuinely demons, and 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 I believed it like wholeheartedly, then I was like, there's there's got to be something on the other side of the equation, right? Like, I mean, there's if that's if 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 I if I'm looking at black, there's got to be white. There always the the equation always has to balance out. And I don't know. At, at that moment, I just I was just sort of stuck with this this thought that I've 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 just kind of had and and it's just like these weird these weird vibes and 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 wherever people would. Would would talk about religion or God or whatever. I would always be really uncomfortable, and I was just always kind of like, "Okay, if that's you, you and your invisible sky fairy." But now I, I, I don't. I'm not like that. I'm just kind of like, "Oh, that's actually interesting." I, I would be interested in in hearing more of what you have to say, and and I would tell some of my religious friends the story, and they say, "Oh yeah, those um, those vibes that you're feeling, just keep feeling them." because he's calling you you're you're yeah. going in the in the correct in the right direction, direction. <laughs> you've you were an anti-theist and and you know you're on the journey <laughs> the, you're you're, so you're almost 180 there. degrees from where you started so that's a pretty big move over what 12 years or whatever so just keep doing what you're doing i'm like i don't really know what to do with that information <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, when you start thinking about questions like that, right, when you start noticing certain things like the existence of evil, you know, and when you start looking into the ontological origins of evil in the universe, like and trying to pursue the answers to that, it becomes pretty clear that like none of this is new. It has been with us from the beginning. And then you start looking more and more into like scripture, into the, the writings of the, uh, the church fathers, you know. Um, I myself am Eastern Orthodox, but I wasn't always. I was raised Catholic and then I, you know, had uh, my leaving the Catholic church, being against organized religion and, you know, researching oh, everything. And then coming to what I believe is to the real truth, which is, you know, in my opinion, uh, I think orthodoxy has the best explanation and answers for all of these questions that I had. Um, but more than that, it's also part of it is experiential, right? Like you have mm -hmm. these experiences that you can't really explain 
and then when you have so many of them and then there's so many of these weird synchronicities that happen or things that happen that can't be explained rationally you know it really really makes you wonder right <laughs> um but yeah. anyways that's sort of like how i i came into um my faith but i've all i've always had like i was because i'm italian i'm half italian half german and i was raised by the italians like i remember when i was three my aunt taking me and my sister into the bathroom and you know making us uh say that the well telling us and asking us to invite jesus into our hearts and having us say that and like you know i was baptized catholic and um went to catholic school but then of course there was a scandal at my school where we had a pedophile priest and the school covered up what he did and they said his mom was sick so he was going to go home to ireland so they actually just moved him to somewhere oh, no. else instead of telling everybody the truth and they raised money i believe for this and said his mother was sick or something and it was like completely not true and it turned out he was like a, a predator and so that was an issue and then we had also one of our alumni at my the catholic school i went to in florida was uh congressman mark foley who was involved in the page boy scandal so i'm going okay that's like two two now of you guys at from my school that turned out to be predators and i remember father flynn would point to his cheek and wanted to like make the kids kiss him on the cheek i always thought that was weird and wrong and creepy uh and so i remembered that and then it came out years later we learned the truth about father flynn but not like, oh, right away and, and then i was like okay i want nothing to do with the catholic church and i didn't like also the fact that like they they have these um celibacy vows that i think incline the priests to a predatorial behavior but it also attracts homosexual homosexual deviants into the priesthood right because those are the people who don't want a wife and kids and the orthodox church allows their their priests are they they get married and they have kids they're, they're like you and me like they have skin in the game they understand what god is like because they themselves are parents of children and they have families and like they understand it, it, i just feel like there's something deeply wrong but, but anyways this is a, a tangent but that's part of, uh, how, how i just came to you know my personal conclusions this is nothing on catholics because i have a lot of my family is catholic still you know a lot of my family and, and i have friends who are catholic and i know it's not their fault and i also know that scandals are in every church and whatnot and you know they, there have been certainly you know scandals in the orthodox church i'll just say a lot less you know um mm -hmm. so your tangent is lovely <laughs> there's the, the chat starting starting to share their, their stories about you know to give oh, the testimonies yeah oh wow that's not exactly okay. but, you never know. had that before <laughs> um <laughs> so i i i guess bringing it back um yeah we've got to bring it back <laughs> <laughs> we've got to get to talking about the documentary in the case uh, i'm sorry i apologize no 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 literally you're you're on a show called off the rail um, that's true so listen i can't be blamed it's what we do here <laughs> i'm um, conforming to the format of the show when in rome um so your documentary how how is that that going if 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 i'm not mistaken you're 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 well on your way in making it is it is, so, is it shot you just need to put it together no it's never I'm, over my problems are never over <laughs> so um i'll just just to give first some background on the the story for people who may not understand and this will help you understand why the project is so difficult uh to make as a film the to give the long story short of like this case um the fbi arrested a bunch of guys 14 men well 13 and then they arrested the, the additional guy uh, a week later so it's 14 total who were arrested and they charged six of them at the federal level for conspiracy 
to kidnap. And then the other eight guys were charged at the state level for, quote, providing material support, felony firearms and gang affiliation. Right. And so um, a superseding indictment was added to some of the federal defendants for WMDs. So think about these charges. Right. You're you're being charged with conspiring to kidnap a governor, and then you're being charged with weapons of mass destruction, or you're being charged with providing material assistance to, to a terrorist, to terrorism or whatever. So mm -hmm. that's crazy. Those charges, right? Um, and so to, to give the rundown of like, well, what actually happened without giving too much away, obviously, because certain things we want to be revealed in the documentary. But to yeah. make a long story short, um, the FBI has a massive network of CHSs. They're, they're called CHSs. It stands for Confidential Human Source. This is the FBI's word for an informant. So I don't think I think they don't want the extent of this program known the sensitive informant program because I think if Americans realized how massive it was that it rivals like the Stasi it, that at one point had like a third of its population acting as active informants for the police agencies you know Jesus. I think that that Imagine. would terrify Americans and the fact that the FBI sensitive informant program uh, recruits people who are in positions of authority or people in the media, people in the courts, courts. So you have a judge who could be moonlighting as an FBI informant or a clerk moonlighting as an FBI informant or a prosecutor moonlighting as an FBI informant. And then you start to ask yourself, well, okay, how is that right then? How does that work? How is it that the FBI can penetrate into where there's supposed to be a separation of powers, right, in America, they're, they're bypassing that by using this informant program. So we know about it, right? We know it exists, and we've seen some materials from it, thanks to um, Jesse Trentadu uh, and his, his lawsuits um, and litigation for the, stemming from Oklahoma City stuff. So we know that this, um, this program exists. And uh, in the Whitmer case alone, right, you know, you had 14 people charged. The FBI used 12 informants and two undercover agents. And this is just what we know about to, like, manufacture the appearance of a crime where nothing criminal happened except on the part of the FBI. So they profile people online. The FBI has uh, something they call OCEs, online covert employees, who operate fake personas online. They will create sometimes Facebook group pages and they will be the ones administering them and trying to funnel people into these groups. Um, you know, some of these guys were picked up um, through a program that was run called Bronze Griffin by social media companies where they would take keywords and notify law enforcement. This is without law enforcement coming to them with a warrant. This was tech companies voluntarily giving information over to the government based on people saying certain key words. So that's an interesting aspect to this. I think that Americans should be concerned that the databases are being made of them, uh, shared with law enforcement, by these tech companies and you don't know what the criteria is for being put on one of these lists and then apparently this database is being given to informants they're being able to access it to make contact with people that the fbi wants to target this is highly inappropriate but this is what they do and so the fbi found a group of preppers you know this little group in jackson county in the country in michigan where you know, like the closest um, hospital might be like 30, 40 minute drive or an hour's drive from your house. Uh, it may take law enforcement 40 minutes to an hour to respond to a call for help. So where these people live in that kind of area. Right now. <laughs> oh, OK. Wow. So then maybe you'd understand like you need to know certain things, right? You have to have certain skills because in the event of an emergency, that's what you're looking at an hour before help arrives. So these guys kind of got together and they were wanting to do defensive firearms training, medical training, things of that nature, where it was just people, common guys coming together and saying, 
These are our skills and trying to teach each other. There's nothing nefarious about this. Like Paul, he was in the army. Uh, he had, he'd been like, um, kind of like a first responder from the time he was 14 years old and he volunteered at the Milford fire department. This is sort of like, he's always been that person. So he didn't have a problem teaching, you know, other people, these skills. That's what he wanted to do. The FBI comes into this prepping group. The Wolverine Watchman was created in November of 2019. Uh, by March of 2020, the FBI has turned this prepping group into a militia group and they're leading the group. Their informant, Big Dan, becomes the executive officer of the group, the XO, and he starts training them in more lethal techniques and more tactical training. He's making it more organized. I, I don't, I don't want to say too much. I don't want to give certain things away, but you're going to learn more about Dan, which is that he wasn't what he seemed. And he certainly wasn't how the FBI portrayed him. But this guy is the one who basically he, along with a pedophile, another informant who happened to be a pedophile and a career criminal, Steve Robeson. They're the two people who basically orchestrated and manufactured this with the three handling agents, mainly though, uh, Jason Chambers and, Hunrik Impala. And so they took a group of guys that were basically rolling around in their backyard, shooting their guns like at literally trees in the backyard. And they turned them into like a militia group. And they're being led by this FBI informant. And then he suggests like, oh, why don't we have meetings or why don't we put on like an FTX that stands for field training exercise, which is common for these militia groups where they come and they, with a group of people, they do training, right? This is training that is perfectly legal. You can actually pay to get this training and it's like thousands of dollars, right? So what the FBI was doing is basically offering something that they were making an incentive to try to bring more people into joining this militia group, right? They were trying to maximize the, the attendance of the group, right? Anything to get more people into, funnel more people into the FBI's plot. So it's, it's the kind of thing that you would want to show up to, right? And think about what's happening during 2020. You have COVID. So Michigan had the harshest lockdowns in the entire mm. country. Whitmer was very proud of that. So you had a bunch of guys who couldn't work. They're not able to work. So they're sitting around all day. And then the FBI is offering to, hey, we'll come pick you up. And why don't we go out and do this uh, FTX and we're going to pay for it. And, you know, they presented as like this fun thing. Oh, there's going to be a barbecue and, and this and that and, and drinks. And, you know, the FBI is furnishing the guys with alcohol, with marijuana, which is against the FBI's protocols. Right. Uh, but this is the kind of thing that they were doing just to get these guys to show up to this event where the FBI would basically set up obstacle courses for them. So there's the FBI is the ones who their informants use the FBI money, basically to purchase the, the materials to create the shoot house. And then one of the FBI undercover agents testified that he helped construct it. And then they filmed these guys running through the shoot house that the FBI set up and their informants are leading the group and are running these guys through the house. And then they take these little clips out of context and make it look like, oh, they were training to somehow kidnap a governor which is not true at all. And I think what's the, the most terrifying thing, at least to me, is how these men could be arrested without any crime occurring or an attempted, like nobody even tried to kidnap her. There wasn't an attempt that the FBI stopped them in route, right? Where they were going to go do something. Like, it's like pre -crime. nothing happened. It was pre-crime, but even worse than that, it's like the FBI sets up a situation. Here's an example. June 6, 2020, Dublin. The FBI, via their pedophile informant, Steve Robeson, who is posing as the head of a national militia group that is fake, it doesn't exist, I mean, it, it does, but it's like the FBI created it because their informant created it. 
So it's called the Patriot Three Percenters, and they have other informants posing as heads of state chapters of other fake militia groups. And so they call and share this meeting, their informant, Steve Robeson, at Dublin, and in attendance is at least four informants wearing recording devices, and they have numerous recording devices on them. So you got four people with multiple recording devices on them as the informants there. And then everybody else there, maybe 10 or 11 other guys, they're targets. So these are people that the FBI had identified for whatever reason as we want this person to show up to this event, to this meeting. And then they have the informants saying, putting people on the spot like Barry. They're saying, hey, get make a speech. And of course, the guys, they're in front of other guys, guys they don't know, and they try to act hard. And then in the backdrop, that night, there was a riot in Columbus, Ohio, and the informants were trying to get these guys to go armed into this riot. Oh, they're in your backyard. Give them no quarter. Uh, they're saying things like this, or they're taking them and they're they're getting them riled up, you know. So they're having a meeting for these different militia people. So the FBI wants it to look like it's all of these militia groups in different states. They're organizing, right? They're getting together and they're talking about doing something bad. And when really it's like. No, you called and shared a meeting. You commandeered like a conference room of a hotel and stationed your agents all around it. You had numerous informants here, like you had a mobile command center. You're watching the whole thing like this is some meeting of like the the five families. Like, you know, the level of like just the, the sheer resources they dumped into this thing as if this was like, oh, these are hardened criminals. Like we've got to commandeer the airspace. And like, it's just these guys. They're just regular dudes, working class guys, their fathers, their people with families who were concerned about what was happening in the country. They're invited to a meeting to talk about things. And of course you have informants throwing out, hypothetically speaking, what would you do in like a civil war scenario? And they, they've got them worked up and emotional at this point, right? Get, give them some alcohol and marijuana so they're a little intoxicated and emotional. And Barry does this rant where he talks about, and they play this clip out of context. He says, well, you know, I might kill a cop, put on his uniform and go kill a fed. And he goes off on a tangent about like running secret service details off the road with his truck because he's a trucker. Um, and it, it's like, if you listen to it, he almost sounds like he's crying, you know, when he's making this impassioned, intoxicated statement. But this is not an actual plan. There's no overt acts that have been taken. This is literally just a man intoxicated saying something offensive, but yeah. they would play that clip. And if you play it at trial and you only hear Barry saying, yeah, I'll kill a cop and then put on his uniform and go kill a fed. No, that sounds terroristic. It sounds bad. It sounds like these are bad guys. And so this was the government's trial strategy of just taking these clips, playing it in front of a jury, showing videos of them running through the FBI's obstacle course with their guns on in their full kits, and then saying, oh, you should convict them of conspiring to kidnap a governor and attempting to overthrow the government and weapons of mass destruction because Barry said this thing at this meeting that was completely set up by the FBI. I'm sorry, but that is entrapment. It's worse than entrapment it's actually framing somebody because he didn't even induce him to commit a crime he's committed no crime he didn't attempt to commit a crime he literally no. just said words that's not conspiring to kidnap somebody you got him drunk and intoxicated and riled up and then recorded him talking about what he might do in a hypothetical civil war scenario where there's no rule of law and then you play this out of context and say, no, no, there, this is a national attack planning meeting. And it's like, okay, 
even if it was, and it it certainly wasn't, but let's let's go with it was, you called and shared it. Why did you do that? Why are your informants the ones like organizing this, inviting people, picking them up, driving them to the locations, giving them food, giving them alcohol? Like at no point is this remotely acceptable, but that's the level of like literally what it is. So when I try to explain to people like there wasn't a plot, like literally nothing, there's nothing that happened. They don't understand how these men could be convicted, how some of them could have been convicted unless, oh, they must have done something. No, literally, they didn't do anything except they were duped into showing up to events put on by the FBI where they're literally theatrically stage managing it to the point where the recon of Whitmer's vacation cottage was organized and planned by the FBI and Gretchen Whitmer. She picked a date and time for the recon of her own vacation cottage that would be most convenient for her. I that's not so these men. That's not these men doing that or planning it. We literally have the text messages from the FBI handlers to the informant saying, invite this person, try to get this person to go. We're going to do it on this day at this time. That it, it's like she is more culpable for conspiring to kidnap herself than these men are. She picked the date of the recon. She organized the recon of her vacation cottage and then pretended to be a victim. That to me is disgusting and criminal. We have text messages from the FBI agents where they're saying, oh, we've got the pull cam. So the pull cam is a camera the FBI installed at Whitmer's property in advance, and not just her property, by the way. They had the pull cams elsewhere. They put them up on certain roads where these guys live. So the pull cam is like a 360 camera. It's in a in like a circle, and it has it can do like um infrared or night vision, right? So they have the ability to kind of like monitor. They had these pull cams they put on her property, and then they had their informant drive the these guys in a vehicle by her house because they were trying to get it picked up on the pull cams. And they're even saying, oh, drive them up over this area where the, there's more low light ambience. Like they're orchestrating a movie. It's stunning. It's stunning I that these the text messages exist. We know about them. They weren't able to show it to the jury, though. The jury wasn't allowed to see any of this information. And these and there are five guys still in prison. Okay. So um you're uh you're a trained paralegal. So you gotta you, that's correct, right? Yeah. Okay. Um that's right. I, I did my research. No, uh <laughs> um so you, you probably know a, a thing or two. Um also a long, long, long time ago, I, I went to police school. So I oh. kind of remember a thing or two. Um, there you go. <laughs> um, first question is, so you're saying that they're they're playing uh, uh, clips out of context. What, yeah. Why not? Why wasn't the, uh, the, the rule of completion implemented? Like, don't play yeah. this. This, this well, little clip you don't get to play the entire thing so the jury can hear it yeah that's because of judge yonkers bogus hearsay ruling wherein he deemed statements made by the informants to be hearsay certain so basically he said everything that was essentially exculpatory in nature that was the informants orchestrating this stuff he called it hearsay and said well that can't be played or used at trial. And what I think is crazy, so like one of these, what? say, FTXs or meetings is like four hours long, right? So you've got a four-hour recording, and they're saying that the parts where in this recording the men say incriminating things can be used at trial, but recordings from the same recording of the informants actually doing the planning, the orchestrating, <clears throat> that's hearsay. So you're not allowed to go there. 
Um, okay. Now, again, I'm I'm in Canada, and so I went, you know, the Canadian police school, <laughs> and our rules are probably a touch different. But um, if if I if I remember my rules of evidence, um, that that wouldn't be hearsay at all. Yeah, that's how is that hearsay? It's that them on recording. Like there's no hearsay. That is their voice. That's them. Like, you know that, it's them. That's that, not that is the evidence. It, it 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 is the thing. <laughs> how is it hearsay? He like changed the definition of hearsay in order to make this bogus ruling. And I think that's you know one of the issues that's gonna go on appeal and, and is probably why Adam and Barry are gonna get a new trial, but in the meantime, like they got their convictions, right? So people don't understand how for how this works, and, and I'll just explain it. The court system is completely beholden to the government. There isn't that separation of powers like they're supposed to be. We um, that, we, we've not, seen Trump. Yeah, like come on, you know, the, the courts are there to do what the security state wills because they're all blackmailed. Like these judges, come on, let's be honest. Okay. <laughs> and so you have like the, your, your working class guys who are reliant on public defenders. They targeted people who they knew like didn't have money. Like Adam Fox, the guy they said was the ringleader, was the homeless man living in the basement of a, the back shack of a vacuum repair shop. That's that's the ringleader. And of course, he wasn't a ringleader of anything. Um, I, I didn't know vacuums that. get repaired. It's, yeah, they do. <laughs> so still, but this is like that. Those are they targeted people who they knew were like working class that wouldn't be able to afford lawyers. And so, for people who don't know, this is how the government works. I'll just give you a quick rundown. You get arrested, and the FBI doesn't have to have probable cause to investigate you. Like for local law enforcement, for cops, if they like, if the uh, Fairfax County cops want to come to my house, they can't just come to my house. You know, they on a whim or like somebody said, you might be thinking something naughty. So like we're here. That's not how it works. If they want to bring me in for questioning, like there has to be a legitimate reason for that. They have to have some kind of probable cause that like a crime has been committed before they can uh, start digging into your life or investigating you. For the FBI, this is not the case. They don't have to have probable cause to investigate you. The FBI can open an assessment on you based on whatever they want. Like they can claim they received an anonymous tip that you were engaged in terrorist activity and then they have to investigate that tip, right? And that's usually how a lot of these things start is they open these ass assessments based on First Amendment protected activity. I've seen it in the documents for Brandon, every single thing in his um, in the FBI's documents for why they opened their assessment on him. It's all First Amendment protected activity. Well, he said this, he didn't, he doesn't like this. He said this about law enforcement. He's anti-government. He has these anti-government views, you know, like it's, it's words. So the FBI could open an assessment on you literally for that. And then they claim they have to like investigate. So there's a big difference between as far as like of evidence required between like what local law enforcement can do and what the FBI is able to do. The FBI operates outside of the constitution since the passing of the legislation like the Patriot Act. They have the ability to essentially uh, indefinitely detain Americans if they wanted to. They can put you in pretrial, they can hold you pretrial. You know, they can pretty much suspend habeas corpus. They can do whatever they want if they say that you're a terrorist. And now anybody is a terrorist. You know, That's oh, up. you taught somebody how to tie a tourniquet. Did you just provide material support for a terrorist? I think you did because the FBI, you know, showed up to your property and was training people. So, you know, now you just provided material support to the FBI's fake hoax. Like, this is what happened. And it's insane. It's disgusting. 
And um, it's criminal, in my opinion. All of these agents, every single one who worked on this, who manufactured this hoax, should be in prison. They should be the ones facing domestic terror charges because, frankly, it was Jason Chambers and Hanrik Impala who wanted to orchestrate a multi-state domestic terror plot. They wanted to have militia groups try to kidnap governors all at the same time in multiple states. Could you imagine that? like five governors get kidnapped or something, or like there's five different groups and five different states, there's militia groups attempting to kidnap a governor. That Could you imagine? more unbelievable than what this already was. But that's what they wanted it to be. And that's like what they were trying to get off the ground. They had targets in 15 different states and they were the ones bringing the groups together they were the ones holding you know joint training exercises bringing together a group from wisconsin a group from michigan bring them together trying to get them to do the joint training exercise where the fbi would introduce certain you know talking points that would be used against these guys later or barry croft taped pennies to a firework that he purchased legally and detonated it from a tree and they called that an ied oh fuck off no, Penny's really? take you, yeah, they called it an IED. And then because he put black powder in a balloon and uh, tried to ignite it, and he tried to, like, you know, the guys, this is the kind of shit they would do when they were drinking at, at these FTXs. You got like 30 dudes, and they're all, you know, goofballs. They tried to blow up like a stove. You know, it's like, <laughs> okay, it's, it's a bunch of like, these are like, Barry's a boomer. All right. He wanted just, to blow up the stove. He's just doing it for fun. Boys He's being not boys. trying. Yeah. And they called that WMDs. He got charged with WMDs for that. And he didn't even, from what I understand, that I don't think it fully exploded. I think it just kind of smoked. So. I'm, I'm staggered, staggered by that. One of the. I shit you not, one of the lines that they said during the first federal trial when they were trying to make a big deal out of like the the firework and the pennies, they said it was raining down sparkles. And I'm like, is this Sparkle. real? Is this real? Did he really just say it was raining down sparkles and and like tried to make that sound scary? Do you know like, how many he, little girls would go, oh my on god? Firework. He taped the pennies on the firework. He detonated it in the tree and it was raining down sparkles. This was an IED. He's a terrorist. And you're like, he taped pennies to a presidential firework that he bought legally at the store. And he, he like tied it to a string in a tree. Oh, and the tree had hanging targets from earlier in the day. So they want to pretend that him putting pennies on it to try to, he was trying to, he was trying to make a make flesh a makeshift flashbang with the firework. That's because why he put the. On it. I don't know. I don't know anything about this stuff, but that's how he explained to me what he was trying to do. And they say because the targets were in the trees from earlier in the day that he he taped the pennies there to test them as shrapnel. And it's like those pennies went maybe two feet off of the firework. Like there wasn't a trajectory here. Like this was not going to be shrapnel like Christina I think we need to worry uh, about these sparkles because <laughs> good god but it's sickening though that like Barry is right now in supermax prison tonight he's in supermax away from his four daughters because oh, he taped some pennies to a firework yeah, I guess and be right in the heart the whole thing it. again and Ugh. like the FBI went to the lengths of literally like buying the firework, taping pennies to it, making a reconstruction video where they detonate, you know, it was like, and they had an agent come in and testify about the receipt where Barry bought the firework. And it's like, why are, what is, what is this? Why are we wasting time on this? Like, who gives a shit? He bought a firework that anybody could legally buy. He taped some fucking pennies to it and he tied it in the tree and he detonated it that's it that's what happened it's not like this but they can take something innocuous like that and make it sound like you were gonna overthrow the government which is what they said these guys were gonna do they were gonna kick off the boogaloo according to the government <laughs> and ignite a civil war overthrow the government and you're like yeah 
Barry's oh, going to do that. The electric boogaloo, was it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh. we're going to, Adam's going to do this from the basement of the Vac Shack, you know. Oh, gosh. The homeless man living in the basement of the Vac Shack is going to overthrow the federal government with their MRAPs, with their nuclear weapons. Like, please. Wait, I thought please. Joe Biden said we, that we need F-16s. Yeah, with their F-16s. What are we going to do with F-16s? Ukraine can't even oh, use that F-16s. You know when Adam was drunk and stoned, or probably just stoned, I don't think Adam really drank that much, but when he was stoned, he said something about wanting to fly Whitmer over the lake on a kite. So I guess that's uh, a real threat, right? Like he talked about they were, you know, how they were going to have like Black Hawk helicopters and they were going to commandeer the airspace and like they were going to like fly her from one helicopter. They were going to get her from one into another. And like, it, it's just fantastical nonsense talk that like somebody would say when they're high out of their mind and they're just talking shit with a group of guys like, yeah, we're going to totally like we'll take out her security detail and then we'll get her in the boat and then we'll we'll drive her out into the middle of the lake and leave her there to inconvenience her and it's like oh okay that was yeah guys like this is real scary stuff the government needs to save us from these guys talking about how they were gonna leave her in the middle of the lake to inconvenience her it's big scary stuff or they Adam made a comment about wanting to perform a citizen's arrest on her and hog tie her to the table while they all stand around her like they did the world's biggest drug bust. Like you, this is a real plan, right? This, these are overt acts being conducted. This stoned talk. Well, I it's no different than any other person, and I mean almost every person that's that's old enough to do this, they've done it. They've thought about theoretically how I you know. would the bank. I'm like, I listen, I've heard worse things at a bar, like bar talk, than Adam's fantastical story about, you know, f flying her over the lake on a kite. Yeah. <laughs> That's actually mild compared to some of the things I've heard people say, um, you know, at, at rallies, even like at, at events, like, this is the kind of common talk you hear from Americans. It's part of our like Americans and our DNA is like we're we were founded on like that revolutionary spirit of like of freedom and liberty. And so this is like part of our culture, part of militia culture, certainly is talking like this. And they all talk like this, but nobody's actually really considering flying her over the lake on a kite that's not even possible for example what is it a space you can't even physically do it or they're not really going to like leave her in the in the middle of lake michigan in a boat that it's ludicrous what would be the point of this and then oh, what no, you know and, and like that's what brandon said when he was arrested and the fbi was like interrogating him and he's like well what am i being charged with and they're saying you know you know and he's like no i don't know and they're like you know you were you were wanting to kidnap the governor and he's like for what like why would we want to kidnap her and then what you know like for what and they're like will you tell us and he's like i don't know what you're talking about nobody wanted to kidnap her no one cares about her or likes her like she doesn't matter to she didn't matter to them like that like they didn't like her and of course they talk shit on her and they like you know they shared memes of her with like the hitler mustache you know like everybody else in michigan did because at that's that time funny. yeah but like nobody wanted to kidnap her no one wanted to be around her and they like they literally didn't really care about her there's parts of Brandon, and this is in the discovery, Brandon saying, well, she's just a puppet. You know, even if you, rem if she gets removed, they're just going to install another puppet because they were talking about various things they could do. Um, like, could we, could we actually get a constitutional sheriff to serve a legitimate arrest warrant? Cause they were trying to, um, 
to figure out a way to, to stop her unconstitutional lockdowns. And by the way, the Michigan Supreme Court later sided with those men that they were right. She had she was violating their rights and she was uh going beyond her powers which is what their complaints were that was why they were having these meetings that was why they were wanting to talk about these things and train and and have have uh talk about ideas of strategies of like what do we do our country is under this lockdown we can't work like they couldn't buy seeds you couldn't see she put covid patients into nursing homes literally to kill thousands of people and everybody forgets that she the some of these men had to watch their family members die like and they couldn't be in the room or like you had to talk to somebody through a window um it's insane that's disgusting uh and the the fact that you couldn't purchase seeds but every liquor store was allowed to be open the marijuana stores were allowed to stay open amazon that's fine you can get amazon deliveries but small mom and pop stores they can't be open you couldn't get your hair cut they wouldn't let barbers cut hair but Unless whitmer of Pelosi. course yeah Pelosi could do that whitmer of course could party her husband tried to take his the boat out and he tried to pull the well do you know who i am card mm -hmm. like this is who these people are this is what they were doing what they were doing was wrong these were the men who were trying to stand against it they were trying to find a way to deal with her you know the situation because it was tyrannical they were right they were the guys who were trying to stand up for people's rights to do the right thing they were not planning to, nobody wanted to kidnap her that wasn't their goal their goal was political change they wanted to fix what was happening they were all directly being victimized by it and not just them many others and so it's it's really crazy when you think about it also these were the guys who were while these riots were happening they were the ones that would show up with their firearms with their kit to protect businesses and their community to try yeah. to stand between you and the mob that's why they wanted those guys gone they don't want a group of men who have the balls to stand up and protect other people they want that gone they don't want there to be someone between you and their their mobs their roving you know marauding looters and rioters and whatever the hell they're doing uh they don't want that opposition there so they they needed to get rid of these guys lock them up silence them um and now they're past they're trying to pass the preventing private paramilitary activity act of 2024 to criminalize literally militia groups so you will not be able to train now with a group of friends if you have three guys and you you're trying to you know do some firearms training in your backyard well now you can be charged with gang affiliation because of this case that is why these convictions five or have more, to right? be turned over it's five or more but let's get real that's going to eventually be less than five it'll be moved and moved and moved until you just can't do the things that you we've had the right to do for over, over 200 years in this country like this is our history was founded on literally like these militia groups and so they needed to get rid of them they want to disarm us and they don't want anybody to be there they don't want any competent men there who are well trained trained enough to maybe be the thing that stands between the feds and you they don't want anybody guys, who could do that four guys following the law they're like all right we're, we're four dudes let's shoot some stuff some targets or, or whatever and then, and then the fifth guy is going to come up and be like hello friends can i can i fellow. join you in, in shooting things and then they'll be like um fellow militia members yeah and, and then and they're like i mean i i guess but you know we're we're just four friends i don't know what who you are but sure you can join shooting this thing and then they'll be like ha ha you're under arrest because we are a militia 
And they're going to be like, what the hell? <laughs> Not just the militia, but a gang. And, and you know, if you have uh, that background, it, you went through law enforcement training, you understand, like, a gang has to be involved in a, an actual criminal enterprise, meaning that they have to be engaged in criminal activity for profit. There has to be a profit uh, motive, right, for it to be considered a criminal enterprise. There's got to be, in some way, they're profiting. How the hell were these guys profiting from being in the Wolverine Watchmen prepper group? You know, yeah, we like have, it's um, we have the right of the right of free association or whatever. So you're allowed to have friends. You're allowed to hang out. You're allowed to be in a group. Like you're allowed to be in a bike, like a bike gang. Just not maybe, anymore. But don't do crime. Don't be the Hell's Angels. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> be be you be be in your dad motorcycle gang or whatever you're you can't you're even true. be in a hobbyist group because if you're five or more people with like-minded beliefs and similar that's ideas it. or whatever you're now you can still be called a gang that's it so, no more crochet ladies that's it exactly no more book clubs no more bingo clubs <laughs> <laughs> the bingo gang it's just insane to me that they could say that make these outlandish statements and claims and that it would even hold up and the only reason i think it did is because people are so prejudiced against seeing men in like full bot you know full kit with their guns oh it looks big and scary like they're really not doing anything scary they're literally just training um but for certain people they see that and they feel intimidated by it because they're insecure and they don't like seeing strong men because they're weak and so that's intimidating for them oh so, so they have need, to be so we need more of it then yeah we definitely do we need it everywhere so like <laughs> so we have i think we have we have like one one real good amusement park in in the entire country um canada's wonderland uh just north of of toronto that I remember one year um, I had like a season's pass and I lived close. I went like all the time. And at the beginning of the season, it was like the rides were really, really scary. But because I could go again and again and again and again and again by like like a week or two later, I was literally falling asleep on big, scary roller coasters. And, and I know it's kind of a weird detour, but trust me, it's going to make sense. So if we had everybody in like tactical vests and guns it's not gonna be scary you're gonna it's gonna be very pedestrian exactly. so that's why that's that's why it it, it it kind of it kind of needs to to be to the point where you're falling asleep on that roller coaster because you know oh look there's 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 john he's he's got a new vest that's great oh look there's my grandma She's she's got a, a lightweight vest, but look at that gun. You know what I mean? So it's like it's like everyone needs it needs more. to be more normalized. I agree. Like people a vest it's, on what every is it? woman and child. Like exposure therapy, you know, where it's the more you're exposed to something, like the less scary it becomes. This is something they use in like dialectical behavior therapy. So if there are people who have, for whatever reason, like phobias about certain things, and they'll get them to get over their fear by like slowly and introducing that thing until they like they adjust and become more comfortable with it until the you know eventually obviously the goal of that therapy is to get to the point where they can be exposed to it and not feel scared or whatever but they need exposure therapy because some of these liberals like they're terrified of guns because they've never held one like they've never actually used the tool so it looks scary to them but they've never handled it they haven't you know if they if they got training they would realize that it's not scary you just need proper training i've never it's, held a gun they, like they've never held a gun and like just looking at it scares them they see a plate carrier and they're like oh you know it, they're, it's not a big deal um but i think it, they just need like more exposure therapy good lord um I, I get mad at all these other people they're like oh you've never held a gun like this one and then they have like a large beautiful firearm beside them looking at you chris and they're like oh like this one and i'm like oh god i'm having a trouser crisis <laughs> Listen, because there's 3D guns are banned printers here. now. There's 3D printers now. I'll just say. I know. I keep thinking about it, but guns are legit banned here. 
Yeah, don't do anything like, that'll get are, you uh, are the set band, up like, for a... Uh, oh, like, he, he was plotting something. <laughs> yeah, Trudeau would literally come in here and go, ha ha! And so, I, although I, I've thought, like, I could get one and then make guns that 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 that, that don't uh, fire and have them as, as decoration. I couldn't do that. That would be cool. But I, 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 want, I want to go to the... Because I'm in the country. I, I have a couple ranges around here and I want to go so bad. I have to. I have to get licensed. That's I so to, goofy. I have to get it. So if I want to like uh, fire a rifle, I need to get um my um like unrestricted. But if I want to fire a handgun, I have to. I have to do special training and get my restricted what? firearms license. Yeah, it's it's like two levels, and so I've, it's, it's so like four hundred bucks and like an entire weekend. Oh my goodness! And the and and then after passing the course, like taking the course and then passing the test, I have to go like this. Please, pretty, pr pretty, please, RCMP, please let me have it. And then and then they go, well, tell us why you want the, the, the privilege of having a firearm. And oh my only, god! And I can only say two things. If I say anything other than the two things, um. I can say because I want to hunt or I can say because I want to uh, sport shoot. If I say anything else, they'll say absolutely not. Do not ask us again. That's insane. You even make the faintest, slightest illusion to defense, home defense, defending your women or your children or your pets or anything. You're banned. That's crazy too. I couldn't live like that. Like in a this is America, you know, like you have the right to defend your property, your family. If someone tries to come into your house, you can shoot them on your front yard, like in on the front yard in some states, and that's fine. Like in Florida, they have the stand your ground laws. So they these fuckers even try, you know. <laughs> Let them try. Yeah, we have <laughs> uh, um... but they don't like this, you know. Last, they don't want us to have these rights. Last year, there was um, uh, a young man who um, lived with his mom, or rather, his mom lived with him. And um, and this was in Milton, Milton on Ontario, so just just west of of Toronto. Um, had like four four men break into his home, and they were like in his home. And he he had his license and 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 had his his um his firearm, and I I think they were like they were actually like coming. It was like it was a genuine home invasion. They were going to hurt him and and likely hurt his mom quite bad in the middle of his home. So it wasn't like a oh sorry I knocked on the wrong door. There it was like it was going bad, and uh, he used his firearm to protect him and 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 his and his mom. And uh, the police were like great. You're right. Uh, that that's murder, and uh, you're going to jail, kid. That's crazy. And that was that. I think that they had him on second degree murder. Wow. Could and, you imagine? Uh, like, uh, what uh, is wrong uh, with that? Eventually, society? because everyone was like, "That's fucked." Like, what? What are you? What are you doing? And then finally, I think he was. I think he was finally released or whatever. But in 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 this country, if if you're if you're a young lady and there were to be an attacker attacking you and you yeah. pulled out uh pepper spray well you're going to jail a uh, bear what? spray going to jail if you were to pull out a knife you're going to jail a firearm oh you're going God. to jail you the the victim you're going to jail now if you were being attacked and you just happen to like reach over and there and you found a rock and as you're being ravaged, you you then turned and you hit your 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 the the, the assailant with the rock. You you may not go to jail, possibly, because okay, <laughs> that's a little bit weird and arbitrary. How psychotic! Yeah, you but can't. Th have a this is like exactly what where they want America to be. Like they're trying to move us in that direction, and part of like the Whitmer thing is is setting that up for like you you can be arrested for just talking for just saying things while you're doing this training or whatever that's 
all that it was. And I think that it's disgusting and it, and it needs to stop. Now, as far as like how to tell that story and um, make a film about it, there's 14 defendants, like I said. So that's 14 guys. They each come into this like a different with different stories, different backgrounds, different levels of like, I don't want to say levels of involvement because it makes it sound like they were involved of something, but like levels of participation, right? Like some people attended more of the meetings than other people. That's just an example. So they have more, maybe um, more evidence against them because if you're following somebody around for an entire year recording everything they say and do you're going to have something you can string together so there's 14 guys in their stories there's their family members all of them have families they have children then there's another like 20 unindicted co-conspirators these are people who just showed up to maybe one or two meetings, or maybe they oh, just showed up to like one or two FTXs, but they didn't show up to enough for the FBI to have like enough bullshit on them to like string them up on fake charges. You know, they have to be able to have at least a, a certain amount of things they can string together to like build a narrative on. And for some of these guys, they just simply didn't have it. But they still told them that like they're unindicted co-conspirators and they could face charges. So that's a potential threat hanging over them. But so like it's a massive story. It is, it is. It's 14 like the people, that has family members, the world. 20 other witnesses people don't know about, don't even know the names of these unindicted co-conspirators. People don't know what their stories are, what they saw at these events, what they saw what they heard like nobody knows the real story so it's been like very difficult trying to make a documentary about this because people didn't understand why i needed the resources i needed and why i set my funding goal which is it's not high by the way one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to produce a documentary at the level we're trying to produce it at is like nothing but people saw that figure and were like oh why are you asking for so much and i'm like do you have any idea like how massive this story is and, and like i need a team of people to help me tell it like it's Aren't that big films like half a million dollars to a million dollars yes yes and i've had to travel like across the country to interview people in all these different states i've had to make numerous trips to michigan i live in virginia um i was lucky that my husband uh has he kind of works in the, not in the film industry but he sells like camera lenses and stuff. So we had equipment we could use. So I had some of that starting out, but like I didn't have a cinema camera. I had to spend $15,000 to buy one. Like if I needed something, I have to pay for that. My dollars. Yeah. My family paid for it. We used anamorphic lenses. So these are very expensive. Like my husband's lenses, very lucky that we had this stuff, but I'm saying if I didn't have that connection, like and that ability, I would have to spend the money for that. So to to like, it's very expensive to try to tell this story hey, and to do this. And and Chris's eyes went like this. They're like, whoa. Yeah, because it's <laughs> like we want to do this, and like the I'm not putting out something subpar. And so, in order to compete at industry standards, you have to be able to, you know, raise the funds to do it. And then I have to travel. I have to. Um, if there's something we don't know, we have to pay for classes so we can learn how to do it because we're a team of three people, three people are doing this documentary that is in itself, I think miraculous, <laughs> you know, that in itself is like astonishing. And so it's been very difficult. I've had to fundraise for everything. We cut that first trailer last year. We'd only conducted one interview at that time. And I used that to fundraise to travel to Michigan, to interview families, to go to locations of interest and whatnot. But I, I still have so many other things I need funding for. I need to be able to archive, to license archive news footage. Um, I need to be able to license music for certain parts of the film. Uh, I need my drone. Um, we were flying the drone over one of the lakes and experienced some kind of interference. The drone just drop straight down into the water so 
lost that. We even had oh, somebody shit. was out in a boat on the lake and was like, hey, you want us to go look for it? They went to look for it and could not find it. It it was gone. That's so, the fence. It's got to be. Oh, uh, I think they had some kind of field up in the area where we were trying to get the drone footage. Because I've never seen it do that. It usually stops and hovers anyways before it crashes into the ground. I don't know why it wouldn't see the water or recognize that or, or try to slow down. It just like dropped right down into the water as if somebody zapped it or something right out of the air. It was bizarre. Um, so I need to get a new drone and I have to go back and get more drone footage. I have to go back to do a couple more interviews because things keep happening and like <laughs> the story isn't over. These guys are still appealing. They're still dealing with their appeals. There's still hearings happening. There's still things going on. Um, and so it's, it's a lot to try to put together. And then the fact that there's, I already have terabytes of footage because this is years of like my story of me traveling to, and to try to get these stood. It's basically, you're following me as I, figure out the story basically as i investigate and go do these things and then you know you're also following some of the guys who were acquitted and like what that what has life been like for them since they were acquitted and newsflash is not good um just because you're found innocent doesn't mean that like you get your life back you think the fbi has stopped messing with these guys they want to get them even more they're embarrassed that these five men were acquitted because the government usually doesn't lose. So you think that they've like stopped harassing them, monitoring them, running informants at them? The answer is no, they're still going after them. You know, there's things that happen to these guys too, where like they'll they'll pass an initial background check, get a job, and then something always happens where so a phone call is made. I don't know if it's the FBI doing it or what, but they'll pass an initial background check and then something happens. They get the call or whatever, and these guys get fired. One it's of them like a was shadow told, campaign. Yeah, one of them was told outright, literally got fired after only one day, and the boss said he was being fired because of who he was and what you know he wanted to do to the governor or whatever and it's like he was acquitted okay he didn't want to do anything to anybody he didn't try to do anything to anybody they gave him a check for one day's pay and told him he was fired Wouldn't that's that be a loss yeah, yeah have have employment money. discrimination but good luck getting anybody to how do you prove it first of all this is something that somebody said to him like he i don't think he had it recorded um that's just what he was told so how do you prove that right it'd be a little bit hard but also you're going to find a lawyer who's going to represent you in a lawsuit these guys haven't found a lawyer who will take on a lawsuit against the fbi for violating their rights which they did it should be an open and shut case they won on an entrapment defense the next logical step if the fbi entrapped you guess what entrapment is illegal the next obvious step would be to pursue the FBI in a civil case for violating their rights so they can get some kind of repayment for the damage that was done. So they get some kind of restitution. No lawyer will take the case. No lawyer has the balls to go up against the feds. They're scared of them. They are terrified of the FBI. Why? Because they've seen firsthand what the feds did to these guys. So they're like, holy shit, if they can do that to the, like these regular dudes, of course they can do it to us. They can monitor their communications. You don't think they can do that to the lawyers? Yeah, they can. And they do. They do these things. That case would just... With it. If, if you won that case, which as you pointed out, you should, would simply be a matter of making the money printer go burr. Be like you would win. And the government yeah. would have to give you all of the money. And right. because so you, of the government, they could just print the money. You would think there would so the be lawyers some be lawyers eager to take that case, right? Like, oh, they it's also terrified. It was a big high profile case. You can kind of make a name for yourself on something like this of like, hey, these guys were 
they were all acquitted. This was a big, supposedly the biggest domestic terror case in a generation. And they, the government lost, you know, half of these guys were acquitted. You'd think there'd be someone who'd be willing to represent all five of the guys who were acquitted in some kind of even, maybe even a class action lawsuit against the FBI or a joint action civil suit against the FBI for violating their rights and no, nothing. They've the guys have tried reaching out to constitutional lawyers, to well-known like um, lawyers on YouTube. Not one, not one will even consider doing it. There's none. Every single person they call, they get ghosted. Imagine how that feels where you, you've gone through this experience for Brandon. You spent 18 months in prison. You come out and this is your life. You can't get a job. You can't hold a job. If you get a job, you can't keep it for more than a month. And then you get fired. And then you have to go to the next place. And then you have to explain why you can't keep a job for more than a few months. Why do you keep getting fired? Like you, And then what do you tell them? Do you tell them, well, because... Uh, I was wrongly accused in a fake kidnapping plot because if you bring that up, they're almost certainly going to go look up articles on it and they're going to see these mainstream media articles smearing these guys as terrorists. And that's like, so they're in a really bad situation and nobody has stepped up to help them. None of they these congressional committees, none of them have done anything. The weaponization committee hasn't investigated it. They haven't reached out to these men or their families. It is shameful. Maybe they should say that. They, they should say that exactly like that. Well, I, I can't hold a job because, you know, I was, you know, it's a, it's a Fed napping hoax. Watch the trailer. And then well, you'll understand. that's the goal. The goal <laughs> is to, you, you know, the documentary, I, I hope, will change public perception on the case because people will actually see how these men were set up and what the government did, how bad the corruption really is. And I think mm -hmm. that will change how they're viewed, how these men are seen by the public, especially in Michigan. If we can get this film into theaters across the state of Michigan, could you imagine how that could help these guys? You know, think about that. That could be a big deal for them. And they, so, many of them, they don't, like the guys who are still in prison, they don't have hope in the legal system. They don't believe that they're going to get relief in a system completely run by the government who framed them. Why mm -hmm. would they, you know, if they, they couldn't have a fair hearing, why would they have a fair appeal? If they couldn't introduce evidence and call witnesses or do any of the things that they needed to do at their first trial that we're supposed to have the rights to do, why would they be allowed to have a proper appeal? So they believe that their only hope is to have their stories told because none of them got to testify at trial. None of the five guys who are currently incarcerated, they were all told they didn't need to testify. Oh no, their lawyers advised them, oh no, no, don't do that. Mm. Why? Why would you not put them on the stand? Why would you not have the jury hear from these men themselves and see them for who they are. And thank goodness I was able to give the last three guys that advice before their final trial. You know, I told them, if your lawyers tell you not to testify, you tell them no. You know, this is your only chance to like have your, to, for people to hear who you are in your voice. That is, I think, a huge reason why the, the five of them are still incarcerated is because they were given that bad advice. Nobody got to hear their story in their own words of what happened to them because they didn't testify. Could you imagine? Like, there's only one narrative then. The, the government's narrative and then your defense lawyers are putting on a defense. But if you don't explain yourself... Like the only thing the jury sees and hears of you are these little, like these clips taken out of context and designed and picked to portray you in the worst possible light. Like you need to counter that perception. Um, so I think they were, you know, they had, they were not given the best um, legal advice. I'll say some of them. They must, they must have been really worried about the cross-examination yeah i think that's well i mean that's what the lawyers tell them they were worried about but it's like okay if the truth is on your side though what are I, you worried about like oh they might you know 
uh, get somebody riled up and then maybe they shout or raise their voice and they, they look bad or they come off as scary. But that's a gamble that, you know, if you're facing like 20 years in prison, you might want to take that chance. And there's ways to prepare people for trial. Like look at the last three, you know, the, the last state guys, Eric and Bill did great when they testified. Uh, mm -hmm. I was so proud of them. And that was hard. I mean, Bill Ralston, he's a, not an easy guy. Uh, he's, a, he's such an asshole, <laughs> excuse my language, <laughs> but he's like a real, he's so rude. He's the guy in the trailer. That's like, so the plan was they wanted to kidnap the governors all at the same time. <laughs> you know, he's that clown, clownish buffoon coming at you, like trying to portray you as like the worst, you know, oh, like an ISIS person or whatever. But like, I think they could have stood their own against these people. Uh, I think their lawyers are just, well, I don't want to say... I, I'm not going to say, I'll, I'll let people come to their own conclusions about whether these men had proper legal representation and received proper legal advice, or whether they were walked into lengthy prison sentences. Um, and the difference between the defense strategies of the ones who were acquitted versus the ones who were wrongfully convicted, there's something interesting, I think, that people could look at that um and come to their own conclusions about it can um so in in the in the beginning of, of the stream or closer to the beginning when we were talking about uh the confidential human sources and and uh you were alluding to um uh, it's it's probably an incalculable number a shocking number yeah. where anybody can be one it could be your neighbor it could be your judge but could it be your lawyer yeah yes it could be and you know what's also interesting is that the government can run informants on lawyers and they may have even done so in the whitmer case you'll have to watch the documentary to find mm. out so that means these people didn't have a chance <laughs> It, it means it's, it's much worse have. than people think. Like the government actually will hand pick your jury. Even they will pick the 157 people that you get to whittle it down from. You know, they pick the jury pool. They pick the venue. They they are running everything. They give you your evidence. You know, and you have to trust them that they're going to give you all of the exculpatory evidence which we know they haven't been doing for January Sixers because a lot of January Sixers are finding exculpatory videos that are, they're like, why wasn't this given to me before my trial? This shows that I, you know, it's there because the January six thing is like even worse in many ways than the Whitmer thing. I mean, it is, they're equally bad, but as far as the, complexity of dealing with discovery for the J6 thing. There's 14,000 hours of CCTV footage. And then there's a bunch of live streams of people who were there that day. So we're talking like massive amounts of evidence. They had to create an entire database for it, right? Um, because there's so much. So when you're dealing with something like that, yeah, it's going to be, you know, getting all of the discovery in advance is going to be difficult, especially also the fact that they don't want to give people <laughs> their exculpatory uh, evidence if they don't have to. Mm -hmm. And many times, of course, they get away with this stuff because they just, people get scared and they take plea deals. And then for J6ers, I mean, I don't blame them because it's not like they're going to get a fair trial in DC. That's not a jury of anybody's peers, certainly not people who traveled to Washington, D.C. to attend a rally on January 6th. Why would a D.C. jury be considered their peers? That is nonsensical. But here we are. Yeah, that was a misguided tour, if we're honest. That's exactly what it was. <laughs> it was a four hour disturbance. I remember one time I made um, a, a video about about J6 and I actually I refer to it as as the misguided tour and I still do. Um, and I some of the comments 
they they like raged at me how dare you say that blah 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 and now and now we we realize or uh, we should realize because you know so much of the, the the videos come out literally just a misguided tour i mean if if, it, if this was a black lives matter kind of j6 riot the the capital the the capital would have been in flames <laughs> yes exactly and this, and this <laughs> would have been burned down i don't know how much of the footage i've, I've watched a bunch of hours like we, we've gone through it on, on some of, of uh the, the live streams where where it's like people were like oh be careful of the velvet ropes that's insane and then, and then there was one guy who was like, like comically stupid there was like a sign it was a, a a silly sign that 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 you know the kind of sign that that would have been like please wipe your feet that kind of sign where like one guy like pushed it over and kind of because he was he was an edgy boy and then like five seconds later another person was like oh heavens me this this sign is has been knocked down i i better take <laughs> it up and put it in its place perfect it's um, it's insane and it's it's sad like j6 is the fed surrection the whitmer case is the fed napping these events are all orchestrated you know by the feds j6 i think more and more evidence is coming out about the fbi involvement in that not just the fbi but i mean my god the cia was there that day what are they doing they're not even they don't have the mandate to even be operational domestically and yet they are they're supposed to be uh focused on foreign things only they're not supposed to be used against our own citizens but of course we all know better hello um mpd metropolitan police had undercovers there there so there was undercovers probably with dhs fbi mpd um then the cia had their bomb sniffing dogs there so there's a lot of weird highly suspicious stuff about january 6. there is the connection to of the guy who oversaw the whitmer hoax being promoted from the detroit field office to be the that. assistant director of the washington dc field office on january 6. so you know there was the storming of the capitol in michigan which the fbi um orchestrated and, and there wasn't really a storming the guy stood in line for COVID screening to get in. <laughs> so like nobody stormed <laughs> the building. They just occupied it for like four hours and then left. But that was the narrative that like they had stormed that Capitol. And of course the FBI had told the Lansing Capitol Police to stand down, open the doors and let everybody in. And they, you know, presumably, I mean, according to the FBI, they believed at the time Pete Musico had a live grenade on him. So if you believe, and like, let's be real, they didn't think this. Nobody thought Pete was dangerous, certainly not the FBI. In fact, so much so that they believed he had a live grenade with him that day, and they told the Capitol Police, let him in, stand down, open the doors, let them all in. Not interesting. Hmm. It sounds fake. You thought he had a live grenade, according to your documentation, but you told the Capitol Police to let him in. Why do you think you did that? Like, <laughs> does any of this make sense? No, because it's, it's fake. That's that's the only reason why. Like the and like to be the, uh, to be like clear, bombs, it was not the... a live grenade. It was a hollowed out grenade that he bought at like some military surplus store. Like this is it's nonsensical the fbi just tries to hype this stuff up as like these guys were dangerous or they thought they were they didn't think they were dangerous nobody thought that was a live grenade like come on it, it, it's it's silly um for some reason in my brain um and i'm gonna need you to, to clarify um, I have this, I have this thought or this memory or, or something was, was, was there a, uh, a female, um, a fed that, uh, literally slept her way into getting, uh, some, some people to participate in the thing that never actually happened. Was, um, is that a thing? Am I misremembering that? No, you're not misremembering it, but the, it's a, it's a little bit of an exaggeration. What? That's the informant Jenny Plunk. Um, sounds got, like a whore. 
<laughs> she got very close to Barry Cross. She was posing as the head of the Tennessee chapter of a fake militia group created by the FBI. Oh, and um, she like, so she would drive Barry around like when they wanted Barry to come to the FBI's Cambria FTX. Um, they, cause Barry was a, a, like a truck driver, you know, he would do these long drives. He was too tired to drive from Delaware because Barry lived in Delaware. He wasn't even from Michigan. Why would he want to kidnap Whitmer? Like, she's not his governor. We don't know. This is the FBI's logic. Uh, he didn't want to drive from like Delaware to Cambria, Wisconsin, because he was too tired. So they had Jenny Plunk, you know, say, oh, well, I'll drive up and then I'll drive with you and your daughters. And, and you know, that way you can rest. So she did that. And then um, she ended up sleeping in the same hotel room with Barry. Um, but it wasn't like so they she tried to sleep in the bed with Barry in the same bed. But the room had two beds and he had his daughters together and what like she she wanted him to put the girls in one bed and then she and him would sleep in the other bed and he was like no why don't you sleep with you know the girls and you know me and and the other daughter will sleep like she was trying to sleep with him okay that's what she was trying to do and she got very oh close to God. him so close that some of the guys some of barry's quote co-conspirators some of the other guys they actually thought she was his girlfriend because they didn't they didn't know that he had a fiance, I guess, you know, chastity. So yeah, many of them actually thought this informant was his girlfriend. So she, she got very close to him and she did try to sleep with him, you know, oh but I don't God. know how else she you could ha describe she has it. a husband. And I, I would hope he would be very cross. And she's also the person who planted the red bag uh, in Barry's car that the FBI later charged him with claiming it had explosives material in it, which was black powder, some BBs and some other things in a, a red Wisconsin bag. And it's like, OK, who lives in Wisconsin? Oh, your pedophile informant, Steve Robeson, whose bag is this? Whose red bag is this? It's not Barry's. He doesn't live in Wisconsin. He lives in Delaware. Who put the red bag in his... Oh, that's right. The FBI admitted they planted it on him so they could seize it later when they arrested him. They literally admitted at, at trial that they planted evidence on him so they could seize it later when they arrested him. That's... This happened. This happened in America in federal court it happened word for word we have the transcripts they just admit to planning evidence I but am... they explain it away as oh well yeah of course we had to plan evidence on him so we could seize it later when we arrested him like they just explain it away like that's a normal thing that they do to try to deflate like the shock that a normal person would have upon hearing such a thing they try to make it sound like, well, obviously that's what we would do. You know, yeah, we just, we plant evidence on people so we can seize it later when we arrest them. But for everyone's safety, of course. It's like, what? It's, no, <laughs> like, you, you don't get to do stuff like that. You can't just go up to somebody, plant drugs on them, and then arrest them so you can seize the drugs you just gave them. That's not how this works at all not, not supposed to be so well, we, it's not we, how it's we supposed have, to work we we, ha we have um i guess a, a canadian equivalent to to the fed napping hoax um it's um i i think i think we call it the uh what do we call it it's a uh, it's just the it, it's the coots four in, in coots alberta oh, um about this yeah, Viva Fries. He's uh, he's talked about it quite a bit. Where basically there was going that there was like four four men or whatever. They they were going to was that the t um during the pandemic when they were like blocking the the border as as, as a protest. These four men were going to go kill RCMP officers. <laughs> That's what right. they they're going to do. They're going to protest by killing our our, our um RCMP officers. And there's like literally no evidence. It was all made up. Two two got off. I think two two were sent to jail. Uh, I'm not. I don't think the case 
is concluded yet, even after all of this time. Um, and they were in awful conditions in jail, and and there was like informants, and 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 I think I think there was also, if I'm not mistaken, um, that there there could have been a, a female officer being close to the the, the wow. business. And um, so it, it's kind of similar in, in a lot of ways where you think there's no way, you know, in, in a country like ours, like there's no way this could happen. But you find it, it's happening at a it's really, happening. really regular sort of way. If it can happen to Donald Trump, it can happen. It can happen to, you know, some some boys in Michigan. It can happen to some 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 boys in, in Alberta. Like, yeah, literally happen to anybody. Yeah, that's a good point. And it's people should be concerned because you don't have to be doing anything for them to make it look like you are any, you know, anything. They can twist things to make it look like you're engaging in some kind of massive conspiracy where like literally none exists. Um, you know, a lot of these guys, they didn't really know each other. I mean, at all. And like, they were called co-conspirators. Like they claim they were conspiring together. And it's like, well, they, they didn't even know each other until you guys introduced them. Like the FBI brought all these people together that wouldn't have met each other without the FBI putting on the events and inviting like all of these people to them. So it's just, it's crazy to me. And in you just the, the lack of like, any evidence of any actual plot but still this went through numerous trials and got numerous convictions because they control the whole thing every aspect of from the time you're arrested they control your interrogation they control everything they pick your your court appointed lawyers they control the venue they get to pick the jury they like they literally run the entire thing the fbi sits there with the prosecutors even managing the evidence that's used at trial for both sides like it's insane to me uh but that's how it is and it's it's criminal it shouldn't happen people need to know about it and i think that's why documentary films are so important because like people don't read okay i learned that and they don't have the time to listen in to these hearings they don't know details of the case like they don't have the time to do that somebody has to put it together for them in a, a format that is easy for people to watch because everybody is so busy they have everybody so financially destitute now that people are forced to work two three four jobs or you know maybe have two jobs and then some side thing that they do so people just don't have the time to dedicate hours into this stuff um and they they don't read articles anymore. Like I've written many they articles. Read the headlines. They read headlines and maybe the first paragraph, and then pretty much that's it. So the only way that like we're gonna get this information to people in a way that they'll actually learn it is to put it in front of them in, in like a documentary format in the form of a, a movie that is also exciting and keeps them engaged. You know, because that's another thing. So. Um, we're getting a little late here. I got to get myself to bed soon. But as yes. far as um, where we are, like in the completion realm, I don't, I'm not going to give a, <laughs> I've learned my lesson in the past of trying to estimate like when this is going to be done because it's such a big project and it requires so many resources. And I refuse to like do something mediocre. Um, I want these guys, I think they deserve to have this put out in the best quality possible with the best resources and the best team. So I actually want to be able to hire like an assistant for my editor. I want to be able to pay him so that he can just work on this for a few months. So that means I need to pay like an actual salary for him for these, th whatever, if it's three months it takes to get it edited and put together, then that's what it takes. I need to be able to pay him. He has a family. He's been working on this for over a year for free um he spent his some of his own money you know he's invested his own money into this so he's a fantastic excellent person i'm so grateful to have him he's 
he cut that first trailer, which is amazing. And I'm proud of it. But that second one, which is even better, like that's all his work. And, um, you know, it, we, but I need to be able to, you know, archive that news footage. I, we had to upgrade our computers. We could, our computers couldn't even handle all of the information we have because it's terabytes of footage from years of not just me traveling, but then there's, two trials that actually were televised from the state cases because those can be televised. So we've got footage from that. We have massive amounts of like transcripts like this from the federal trial of just pages and pages of information that has to be put into a computer system and all has to be um, transcribed, <laughs> right? So you can search it by topic. Otherwise you're buried in this stuff and you can't find anything. So you have to scan this stuff make it um transcribable and then searchable that's a lot of work i have so much i'm like buried in stuff and so i i needed to have like we had to upgrade our computers we still my little computer i'm on here is the lenovo legion laptop guys i can't even work on the documentary here i have to use like our desktop and that I have to upgrade because it's just not working for us. Like th there's too much footage that, and then the hard drive that we, we had to do this special drive and like just to handle it and then to connect my computer to my editor. So if, if we work on something and edit it, that the changes get made to him, we had to connect it through a cloud. And, and that was expensive and time consuming to figure out. People have no idea. Like, what goes into this and that's just scratching the surface that is not getting into the the software that we have to pay for for certain editing and um the classes that we had to pay for that we took first again to, to learn learning how to do this stuff because we didn't have a production company or any experience and then everything else that i need to be able to do it's a lot it's a lot so, i got so just is it your wrong. standard adobe <laughs> yeah and it's not like a it's not the kind of film that like you could like, uh, oh, I could scrimp here or like cut corners there. Like you can't cut corners or you're cutting out part of the story that like you can't do that. I literally can't tell the story unless I can fill in all the holes and like otherwise we don't have a complete film or a complete story and um, that can't happen. So there it's. There's a lot that goes into this. I even want to hire a script writer to help me because, again, I know the story and there's so much information. But just because I know it and I'm a journalist doesn't mean I'm a good storyteller. Like I if I I would much rather hire a professional script writer where I can tell them, here's the story. Here's the information. How do we tell this story in like a good way and have a professional help me? So I'd like to be able to pay a script writer um, that is experienced. There, there's so much that goes into this. So basically, I need to meet my fundraising goal, which will give me the resources to hire the people I need to get it done. And, and the guys can't wait five years for me to raise the money by like working numerous jobs or whatever to do that. We're never going to have somebody, by the way, in like conservative media offer to help us. Um, I, people have said to me, oh, why don't you reach out to this person or, you know, this channel or, or outlet? You know, they, they think of these big conservative names and I'm like, guys, they don't like you don't understand how it is. I know those people and like that nobody is going to help with this story. Like they don't want to touch it. They don't want to go up against the feds. And there's other things too. I mean, they may even have legal concerns about getting involved in stuff like this. So there's the lawfare potential. Um, there's lots of ways where, you, you know, where they can go after you. And so there's nobody's going to come and like rescue this film. Like no, but there's going to be no donor that comes in and like donates the money we need to meet our funding goal. It's all regular people, regular people like you or me who are donating small amounts. That is how this film has been made. It has been made by all of the people who listen, my listeners, my viewers, my supporters, 
and my ability to go out and do interviews and like push the fundraiser. It's just regular people. There isn't going to be a big conservative outlet that wants to pick up the film. I doubt that. I think if they wanted to, they could have approached me already. That the hasn't Angel Studios happened. couldn't couldn't come in and um, be like. I don't know that they know about it. I, that actually may be one option of somebody to reach out to. But I'm thinking more like because I mean they're pretty big, bigger like more conservative establishment like oh we have lots of money but like we gatekeep like i'm talking about daily wire god damn you ben shapiro i didn't want to name names I'll but name like names. come on him and his tiny hat how much money like was spent to make what is a woman and will that film be remembered 10 years from now uh or would that like would it be better spent supporting a documentary like this documentary that is, you know, hopefully going to literally get innocent men out of prison? Uh, I think that's a little bit more important, but also just because it's something that affects everybody, like the, um, and this is not to denigrate that film at all, or um, what's the gentleman's name who did it? Um, Matt something Matt or other, I forget, Matt Walsh not to denigrate him at all. I think he does good work and stuff, but I'm saying that that's a topic that doesn't affect most people. Like, you know, how many people have to deal with the trans issue every day in their day-to-day -day lives? Like I don't, I never run into them. It's not something I have to deal with. Some people do, I get that, but it's sort of like, what is more important though? Like the FBI is setting people up. They're framing you. They're coming after regular people and they've weaponized the entire government and there's innocent guys in prison. And like, let's actually do something about that. Or, yeah. you know, this more fringe issue. I don't know. I just kind of look at it and I feel like you could have, you know, I could get this film done at like a fraction of the cost of like what goes into something like that with just a, a teensy bit of that budget. Like, look what I've been able to do with the teeny bit that we've raised so far. We've accomplished a lot. And that's not to like toot my own horn or anything. I mean, we've done a lot of work and that's just a fact. And um, I, I just like it frustrates me <laughs> when I see certain things like gee, wouldn't it be nice to have the budget to like really do this the way I want to do it? But no, I have to fight for every little scrap and to, to get any attention on this case. I've had to fight to get the attention of any of the big name people that I've done interviews with. That was all, it's all a battle. And it takes like regular people demanding them to talk about it. That's another issue that shouldn't be on our side, we should all be supporting each other. People should care about this story. You shouldn't have to have your audience bully you into talking about it. Like, what does that say about you? You know, I, I that's disappointing. Um, but well, I, uh, I, I think part of the problem is that. So this this story was, you know, from October eighth, twenty twenty, right? And yeah, he, he, here we are. You know, a little bit of time has passed. Um, the the first assassination attempt on, on Donald Trump that was that was news for about what uh, less than a week yeah before less they were than passed. a week and, oh my god that's such so, a good point so you're trying you're trying to tell this very important story and Christine I got to tell you you're doing a such a fantastic job like even even the gentleman that's cut these trailers I mean you you have me here waiting with like bated breath and again Chris is. <laughs> A, he's a professional filmmaker with all, all those feathery things yeah. um and you know he, he he agrees here like i'm way with baiting breath to like to see it because so far it's it's i mean it looks phenomenal but this is it's it's you're likely what a, a year two, or two away maybe like Probably. and and then so you're trying to get these people's attention. Hey, remember this really important thing that can still actually affect you now? Yeah. And people are like, yes, <laughs> but come on, man, that's like four or five, six uh, years now, ago. Now we're now we're now we're talking we're about interested this, thing. In this other thing that's currently happening. You're like, no, but this is super important. Yeah, it's so hard, it you know, to not struggle. let not let people forget about these men and to let them know that like 
I'm going to stick with the story. How many people do you think have abandoned them? Well, how many people do you think write to them? I'll tell you, besides their family, the number is zero. They have nobody else helping them. I've been the only person who is consistently still helping these guys, still trying to make sure the story isn't forgotten. They don't have anybody else. And uh, that in itself is shameful that so many people have, you know, t use their story uh, occasionally when it was convenient for them, you know, to talk about, and then they never bring it up again or whatever, or they talk about it for five minutes and move on, you know, maybe once or twice. And, and it's difficult to, to humanize them to, because I've gotten to know these guys and their families. They're not like just random dudes to me now. Like I know each of them. I know their families. I know their stories. I know who they are as people. And I'm, it is upsetting to try to shake people out of this, like this just delusion and distraction that they're in where they're focused on so many other things. And to be like, Hey, these are the guys who were going to stand in between you and tyranny. And you're letting them, our best men, rot in prison, forgotten about. You're not even writing to them, which costs you nothing. And I've put their mailing addresses up on a website to make it easy for everybody. Yeah, I have that on and screen right now. still can't do it. Like, really? Really, people? Uh, it's hard. Uh, I noticed none of them are in Michigan. Some of them are quite far away. I have to update this. Uh, that was a battle. We finally, after 11 months, got them back to Michigan, three of those guys. So Adam and Barry are still in Florence Supermax. Those are the correct ways to write to them. Uh, Pete is actually still at FCI Gilmer, but um, Joe and Paul have been brought back to Michigan. They're back in Jackson County after 11 months. Finally brought him back for their appeal. Don't know why Pete hasn't been brought back. He had the same charges. He was part of the same trial, but I don't know. Like no one hears from him except his wife. It's mm -hmm. very difficult to communicate with some of the guys right now. Uh, but they they've been brought back, but like still their appeals are tampered with. Like we don't even know when their appeal is going to start. It's been uh, eleven months since they were supposed to file the appeal, but they keep pushing it off. You know, the lawyers have their explanations for why the Michigan court system is so bizarre. Apparently there's this court of claims process you go through where you can expand the record, right? So you have the chance to maybe um, add to the record things that you didn't get in during the trial. I don't know why they do it. This It's so different than any other state and it's so different from the federal system. I don't know. I can't explain it. Nobody's giving me a sufficient explanation for why this is happening, but apparently they have to exhaust this court of claims thing first, and then they're supposed to move to the appeal. But it seems to me the system is designed to just drag this shit out. It's been years and like nothing is happening. They've been in there for two years now. They were convicted in 2022. When does their appeal start? It's been yeah, two uh years. Yeah, and usually when you when you expand the record, you do it on the spot. So you're like, I want this evidence in. And then the judge goes, yeah. No. And then Why you go, after Okay, the well, fact? what I would have you're like, what I would have demonstrated with this evidence is this, 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 this. Now that's on the record, we'll forget that it exists. And then the then the the appeals court goes, Oh, it's already here in the fucking transcript. I can I, and they already have it. You don't need to go through an extra step. It's insane. And like the same judge who oversaw their trial is the one overseeing this like thing now. It's Judge Wilson. So I'm like, well, he's not going to like change his mind on his own rulings. What is even happening here? Like I've never, and Whitmer is the head of the Michigan Department of Corrections. She's literally the head of the MDOC. That's so corrupt. She's the, it is. And like, we have emails from the prison people. We know they transferred the guys to federal facilities on the eve of their appeals last year because of politics. They were saying, well, we're going to move them because of what they tried to do to our supervisor, meaning Whitmer. 
Um, and they made this decision before they'd even conducted the security assessment on the guys, but they moved them and they said they did it because of security, that that was the reason. That turned out to be a lie. Their own emails uh, show that they were doing it because of politics. And then they tried to say, well, we were worried that half the half the prison wants to kill them, half the prison thinks they're heroes. You know, oh, we were worried about riots and this and that. And it's like, guys, they sat in the prisons like during the like they were in the prisons before and like that didn't happen. None of this happened. And you brought them back like, well, OK, what changed then? You claim you move them for their own security. Well, why are they safe now then to come back to Michigan? If you had to move them to federal facilities across the country for their own safety, what, what has changed? changed? Yeah. Oh, that's right. You got, you know, you got busted lying and playing games. And the only reason I think that these men are back in Michigan I'll just say it is because of the documentary and my reporting about it and letting people know and putting mm -hmm. enough public pressure on them that they couldn't get away with it any longer. And not just on them, but on the lawyers, too. Why? Why do we have to do that? I don't know. But anyways, I got to get to bed. <laughs> it's so yes, late. OK, so um, your your give, send, go. Um, uh, give, send, go dot com slash Radix Verum. Um, and I, I guess any anybody who has any 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 pennies to rub together, um, send that there because we got to get this thing done. Mostly, Definitely. mostly, so I can watch it. <laughs> I I want to watch it too. I mean, shit, because it's, it's so good. And <laughs> I um, love the footage that we have. I mean, I watch it myself when we're editing, but I'm like, oh, I can't really like. I cannot wait to see it all put together. Watch it from start to finish. It's it's exciting like seeing your baby like all of your work you know coming together mm -hmm. it's fun because some of this stuff too it's been so many like so much time has gone past that i've forgotten some of the stuff i even filmed and did and we've had to rewatch it and i'm like oh i forgot about that that was so great okay, so, so in in our um in our um Messages on Twitter. I told you I would keep the simping to a minimum, and I've done that pretty well. But I, I do think want, so. I, I want, and the fangirling, I've done <laughs> all right. Um, um, I, I did want to uh, share one little story. So when I said the simping at a minimum, this, this is what I mean. So the first, the first time I ever came across you, you were on with with Andrew Legal Mindset. Oh. Oh my goodness! <laughs> long, That's so funny. Long must have been a while ago. ago. Years ago, years ago, and and your lighting was much worse back then. Oh God, I was in the Bat Cave back then, like way worse. I've got some backlights now, which I didn't it was, have. Your before. lighting was so terrible, but oh, it don't made say you. That. It, no, it was dreadful. It was <laughs> it fucking was. awful, Christina. But it made you. It made you uh, very mysterious. So this is where the simping begins. So I, I had on Andrew, and I, I forget why. And and I came in like way way late. So so you had you had already been like introduced and everything. So I, I no idea oh, who you so were. Funny. But I turned it on. And I was like, oh my god, who the hell is that? But I couldn't <laughs> see you. It was only like a sliver of your face. I'm like, oh my. god. God, I, and and I I didn't I I didn't know your channel. This was like, a, so again funny. years ago. I was like, oh my god, who is that? And then and then uh, something happened, and I, I the the stream, um, I had to leave the stream or whatever. And then I was like, I I guess I'll never know or whatever. And then <laughs> however long passed again, and uh, I was watching the stream because I, I don't watch them all the time. Um, and then you came on again, and then and then you. He introduced you. It was like, oh my god! And then I—that's when I then made it to your your channel. I was like, I'm gonna follow that because that that lady not only pretty, incredibly smart. I was like, that, oh, that's that's fantastic. You. And so it's, it's it's been years, years since um. That must have been, been back in the Johnny Depp days when we were covering I mean, the Depp herd it stuff. Might have been. It might have been. 
Yeah. Maybe then, maybe before. I, I don't know. It was a long, I, long time I ago. I first came on Andrew's channel, by the way, when his channel was super small. Andrew has a big channel now, but I came on when he was at like 29,000 subscribers. I remember my first appearance. He His channel was still small. He's a, he's a big shot now. He's big and fancy. <laughs> well, here we go. I, have, I, I have... always knew he would be, though. I told him, like, you know, you stick with it. Like, you're your channel is going to grow massively and he's been, you know, massive success. That, that, uh, that same fortune that's fallen upon him. That's not on the cards for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the cards for any of us. Listen, it's not easy to like, Andrew makes it look easy because he's super smart and talented. Mm -hmm. It's not easy to like do streams like that. So the um, it's too, hard. Oh my God. I don't, we don't talk <laughs> about, we don't talk about his VTuber arc. I'm ignoring it and <laughs> pretending it will go away soon. <laughs> it won't. The VTuber arc must end, Andrew. <laughs> I like anime, but VTubers are not anime. And we're going to have our discussion about that one day. They're not I even people. We don't see this. <laughs> we see this differently. Like but furries. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly how I see VTubers. You are not anime. Stop trying to appropriate our culture. You're you not a real bunny. A real anime girl. <laughs> Get over it. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, Christina. We're at three hours. I I, I respect your time as, as as much as I could probably talk to you forever and, and 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 hear all the things you have to say. Oh no. Also, sorry, ADHD. Um, there's been a few times where you've been in court and you've done the tweeting the the things oh, yeah. as, as the court goes and and um I've I've actually used you as a as a main source for the videos because I've covered that story and usually they've done very very well. So I um I just want to say thank you for 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 doing your your independent journalism because I mean with without you know what you've done in the courtrooms tweeting it all out it might not have come out correctly because we know yeah. that the news doesn't cover things were shit but. No. Um, it might not I, have been covered at all. It's and like so you're, just, thank you're you. reading a different proceeding. Like when I read like the mainstream media coverage of like what was happening every day during the Whitmer trials, they were talking about irrelevant things and then ignoring the most bombshell stuff that happened. That like they just our articles were so different, like mine versus theirs. I found that deeply disturbing, but you're right, that is the case. And like I was one of the only people there for Ray Epps sentencing. Um, like big, nobody big showed one up for that. Yeah, which was crazy one. that like hardly anybody was there for that. And that was one of the weirdest proceedings I've ever been in. And I like I go to these, you know, hearings all the time. And and because I live so close to DC, like I'm able to attend a lot of these oversight hearings. Um, so it, that was just one of the strangest things, but I, I'm very lucky to, I'm glad I live in the area and that I'm able to travel to DC to attend like a lot of these hearings because, you know, having to rely on corporate media, forget it. You're not going to get the truth from them. And so, so because someone's got to do it, you know, because of, <laughs> I am, I am absolutely convinced and I don't think anybody could probably um, convince me otherwise because of your reporting on on ray epps sentencing and me not necessarily because of me but people like me using your reporting on it and actually sort of being like oh my god this this sort of just happened the 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 the, the young man who was sentenced in the same court for the same crimes by the same judge the very next day didn't get his life absolutely fucked and yeah. it's, I, I think that's I think he he probably owes that to you. And I mean, journalists like you. So, again, thank you for for, for doing that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, because it makes my job much easier. But <laughs> <laughs> also, thank you so much for for being here. You're you're you, you, you're a inspiration to me as, as a content creator. And uh, I am I'm thank you. so excited to see this documentary. So, I mean, just go out there and film some more shit already. I will. And, trust and for me. everybody else, um, I think I have um, Christina's all, pretty much all of the links below. the The one that I did I did miss is the is the gifts and go. I put it in the chat. Oh, perfect. 
and uh yeah donate if, if you if you can because we got to get this thing done so anyway so um like I, I guess that's it all the right big scary interview is over yes you did great <laughs> no now i'm kind of sad oh <laughs> well i appreciate it thank you for having me on the best way for people to find all of this stuff is to just go to the and bookmark the documentary website knkfilm.com from there you should be able to so you'll find the trailers on the, the front page there you should be able to find the donation page with our support links you'll be able to find the way to see if you want to write to the guys i encourage anybody if you have the time especially adam and barry the two guys in supermax prison if you can write right. them a letter just write something encouraging you know are they their like address is correct on this yes those ones are correct so florence supermax adam and barry write to them if you can has to be on a, a white um white paper with a white envelope and i have the instructions there on that web page so you can reach out to them that way if you would like i know that they always like hearing from somebody that isn't me <laughs> <laughs> not that they don't like hearing from me but you know you know how oh, it is they like hearing from new people so you can send amazon books and 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 such yes you can also um well so this is an issue though because sometimes they don't get them like i have sent books to the guys and they just or months go by and they don't get them for three months for when this is the the issue with the federal bureau of prisons it's horrible but you can send them um, books. Uh, Adam likes, I know, puzzle books. So he likes to do like crossword and like things like that, that, that like can keep their minds engaged. Um, crossword puzzle books, Sudoku, things like that. They like stuff like that. And also, um, if you are going to send a book, it, it can't be anything. You can't send a book that references like breaking out of prison like oh somebody who's oh. in prison that breaks out of prison or like it's so weird and certain like science fiction stories aren't allowed because they talk about themes of like liberation it's like a weird thing so, but so no mind faith then. St stick to faith-based books and like puzzle books and you'll be good <laughs> um and so uh knkfilm.com you can also find the twitter account there you should be able to find our youtube channel which is also criminally under subscribed i think we only just recently got a thousand subscribers there that's so surprising um so subscribe to that and bookmark the website and you can find everything else from there i'm sure Mm -hmm. And so uh, all, all of those links are i think they're they're in the description below I, I have all of them except that gives and go which everyone should check out so um again thank you christina thank you everyone in in the chat for being here um uh, and uh, i guess i guess we'll we'll see you next time eventually or whenever i make another video which should be daily but i have too many kids anyways uh, <laughs> we all do <laughs> we all have too much. much to do all right bye good night Wait, wait, wait. Wouldn't that be funny if I stopped if I if 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 I stopped the end credits so then I could do I could do something like this. Ha! Oh, I've covered my own face. This this that's not working out. That's okay cuz Chris has got the handsome face. Um so the thing I want to tell you guys about is the um, is about a thing. It's called the real world. And it's a great way for uh, fresh graduates to make money online because, God, isn't that the most important thing right now? Uh, when is a better time to uh, start a business than if you've graduated recently or in a job you hate? Like, seriously. Um, so for $49.99, thousands of people are making money online. And for graduates who don't really feel like college has, has taught them how to build a business, the real world is the answer. College almost can't teach you anything nowadays, so 
go to uh, this little barcode that's covering my less than handsome uh, face. Um, Chris has got he's got the handsome face. That's why he's up there. So uh, scan this barcode and uh, do that. All right. Yes. A dollar forty four. I love you all. Peace out. No, this time it's really over. You guys have to go. It's it's really over. I mean it. We're not coming back. Go on.